Hi, everyone. Welcome to Domain Sherpa and Happy New Year. We're kicking off 2023 with a Domain Sherpa review featuring Drew, Adam, and Braden. We start things off by talking about the recent changes to the GoDaddy commission structure affecting sales on GoDaddy, Uniregistry, and Dan.com, among others. And then we have the domain game featuring Jockton.com, SexualAssaultAttorney.com, and Quilt.com. And then we've got the Namejet in a Jet segment sponsored by Namejet. And we talk about some domains coming up for auctions such as MuscleDrink.com, com petclothing.com gameparty.com and wi-fi booster.com and then we close the show with some info about the upcoming ica meeting in las vegas the upcoming names con 2023 in austin texas and some general thoughts about luck and success as we enter the new year and remember if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast you can also watch the video version at domainsherpa.com and on our youtube channel at ds.tv you can also listen to the shows on apple and spotify and other podcasts platforms as well and speaking of dan.com big shout out to the number one place in the world to buy and sell your domains with a special platform made for domain investors with that it's now time to get into this episode of domain sherpa where all roads lead to domains and happy new year What's up, Sherpa Network? Happy New Year 2023 coming at you live. Thanks for tuning in today. My name is Jonathan Tenenbaum, a.k.a. JT, a.k.a. Jayon, a.k.a. Sherpa Winfrey, and I'm the host and producer of Domain Sherpa, where all roads lead to domains. Today's show is a Domain Sherpa review where we get into the minds of successful domain investors using real examples so we can learn strategies and tactics to become more successful domain investors ourselves. These are the experts, the best in the biz, and it is a brand new year. Papa got a brand new bag. We're going to go and get it. We got some things to talk about. There are four segments to the Domain Sherpa review. We got the grand opening. That's why I intro the Sherpas. We see what's going on with them. Talk about some related things, some unrelated things. We'll try and keep the tangents to a minimum for you domain maxis out there. Yeah. Through the AKAs, you know, so grand opening, AKA the beginning, AKA the start. I'm even AKA in the phases of the segments. Just, I'm just playing. All right, all right. I'll, I'll chill out a little bit. Phase two, segment two, we got the domain game. That's what we hear about the Sherpas recently bought or sold. Everybody guesses. We give out, we give out swag to the winners, keeping score. Segment three. Sometimes. Maybe, sometimes. But hey, Braden's rocking a little ape in gear right now. Ape in, Damn. baby. AIP. We all going to make it. Yeah, time to ape in. Um, segment three, Namejet and a Jet, sponsored by our friends at Namejet. That's where we review a list of domains coming up for auction. And then finally, we got grand closing where we discuss anything we haven't covered already, what's going on in the domain space, looking at the market trends, current events, and uh, allowing the guests to mention, promote anything we haven't already talked about or discussed. All right. Well, look, that's the the, the quick intro. Let me go ahead and do the AKAs and get it cracking with the Sherpas over to my right. I got my boy Adam Strong, aka John Wick, aka Tony LaRusa, aka Up and Adam, aka Adam Antium, aka Illinois Jones, aka Adam, you're only as strong as your weakest backlink. I don't know, man. It's a lot of a lot of wow, stuff. That was a reach right there. That, that was well, you know, it's funny because I had that one written down, and even as I was reading it, I'm like, what am I saying? You know, but I'm like, but I just had to trust the process, man. I got I got one more for you. You can call me Glitch now too. Ah, I like it. I like it. Glitch, Glitch Mob. Um, is it take- Glitch? Isn't there, isn't there a dude in the Matrix called Glitch? Mm, probably. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's funny. Right. I'm sure there's like a streamer gamer named Glitch. I'm sure there's like some folks, you know, out there. Um, you know, pop culture characters. I don't know. That's a good question. But you know, the reason I uh, calling you Glitch because you got that weak internet. This is just something we were talking about offline. I said, you know what? Let's let's save it for the show. Plus, we got a name coming up in the name jack and a jet segment that, that kind of relates to this. And because uh, Adam has terrible internet, and it's almost like, "Hi, I'm Adam," and I've, "Hi, Adam," and I have terrible <laughs> internet. You know, it's just like you need a support group, man. And uh, Drew making the point. Oh, god, got to sell some more domains. Yeah, well, Drew said, "Look, man, as as much as it's the lifeblood of our industry, domainers just have bad internet." And uh, you know, and and which is which is weird. And I said, well, you know, a lot of people have bad internet. I think the problem, and like I said too, it's like. Now, internet are like energy drinks. You know, you got Wi-Fi Boost Plus and you got Wi-Fi Extreme. And 
None of it works. It's all it's all BS. They tell you now you get this many megabits, this many gigabits, upload, download. You go and test it on these sites, fast.net or whatever, and some of this. Thing. None of it jives. It's all like, anyway, but that's my rant. I'm fired up today, guys. I'm fired up. It's all a scam. Always is. <laughs> It's all, nothing works and nobody cares. That's what my father-in-law says. So I've adopted that. Drew's, Drew's thing is it's all a scam. It's like, you know, it's true. It's true. We got to go be, we're gonna, you got to pull the curtain aside. It's all BS, you know? So, but I'll tell you what is Peel back BS. the onion. It's <laughs> a scam. But uh, I'll tell you what isn't BS though. You know, the fact that it's 2023, it's the Michael Jordan year. You know what I'm saying? In the 2000s. Which means, you know, 2022 is an interesting one, but, uh, you know, now it's time to get after it. So, you know what? Let me keep going with my AKAs. Let's see. To my lower right, I got my boy, <laughs> Braden Pollock, AKA Tony Stark, AKA Benjamin Button, AKA Eat Bray Love, AKA Braden Statham, AKA Braden Pollock, and the Archduke of Calabasas, AKA. It's not that your domain is worthless. It's just that it's worth less. And yes, we know you don't live in Calabasas, but I don't care. It doesn't matter. You know, Prince uh, Harry and, you know, he's like the he's got like all sorts of titles. He lives in L.A., man. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not in the U.K. Like he's, you know, he's just setting fire to all those that that whole royal family and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Like he's not doing that from the cat. He's not inside the castle. The call is not coming from inside the castle. But, uh, but what's up, man? I think you lost everybody even, on that one, man. What are you even talking about right now? I'm talking about the, the, the Prince Harry and uh, Meghan, uh, you know, the the Netflix show that they did. And that, that got you know, everybody spun up. There's a lot going on up in your head, right? <laughs> the problem is some of it comes out your mouth and it doesn't make sense to the rest of the world. So you just need to kick in that filter a little bit more. <laughs> That's messed up, man. I, I was saying I was having a rough day. I was even my day was a struggle. And then I got on the call. I saw all you guys and your beautiful faces. And I just, you know, time to and turn it start up. Giving you, they start giving you shit. Oh, yeah. But you know what? I'm not even <laughs> mad. I'm not mad. It just feels it feels it feels right. It feels right, Braden. It's all good. But um, anyway, yeah, I'm referring to the Prince Harry, Meghan Markle Netflix show that has stirred up a lot of stuff with. You know, they whole. got paid for that. You know, they got paid for that show. It was like a hundred million, right? Like 100, 150 or something. A hundred million dollars. Yeah, dude. Just this, and they still have like a book and like all, and yeah. all kinds of other deals. But a hundred million dollars just to sit there and get interviewed. Just yeah, and that's what I'm saying. And they just stirring the pot. All a scam. You know, it's like get your money, get your money, Harry and Megan. I'm okay with it. I'm cool with it. You know. So but, you know, people are mad like they that they they threw the royal family under the bus and all that. It's like, well, for a hundred million dollars, huh? Throw a lot of people under the bus. I'll throw everybody. Under oh the bus. yeah, I'll, I'll throw you under the bus for a lot less, Braden. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I'll kick out. the king in a koi pond. Like, <laughs> come on, give me that hundred million. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Why are you acting like what I'm saying doesn't make any sense when you know exactly what I'm talking about? You know. So anyway, um, but yeah. So uh, <laughs> it's all it's all good. It's all good. Is it, with, is it, I feel like it's kind of like trademark infringement with domains, though. Like. You know, like the only reason they're making a hundred million dollars is because they're riding the coattails of the value of the royal family, mm. but they've been kicked the fuck out of the royal family. So it's kind of like your web developer holding your domain hostage and then monetizing it. And you're like, well, you were technically the guy who had the rights holding the name, but it was because of our brand. And now you fucking left. Or you got fired know. and you're fucking, you know, holding our domain hostage. And but I think I think I, the, I, I think the, I know, it's kind of like that. I don't know if all roads lead to domains. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Prince Prince Harry was born into the family, right? So yeah. Yeah. he he like he has every right to talk about his world. So it's not like he's talking yeah, about. But he's not. Nobody's talking. Nobody, 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 he doesn't. Nobody's asking about his world. The only part of his world that anybody cares about is like yo how is megan like yeah, yo well look life tell me is what that's like you know like nobody cares about his life they only care about his life as it pertains to the royal family yeah but it's legit because he was born into it it's not like he's borrowing it and or work, he worked there for five minutes or something he was born into it he grew up into his adult life at as as part of the royal I family mean, he was shown the door though you know what i mean like so you know, he they failed. stripped him they stripped him of his title that's because he left. 
Oh, okay. But, See, I didn't... like this is not a place to talk about the royal family. And also, yeah, yeah, yeah. honestly, I don't really care about the royal family. I, I just, know who gives a shit. I but really hey. don't like not not my royal. I like. Family. I just I just wanted to argue because of my analogy. I, I like my domain analogy. I think your analogy is good, but I think it it just shows that at the end of the day, life comes down and deals come down to leverage, right? So domains, life whether, comes down to domains. It comes down to leverage, right? So at the end of the day, you're just trying to utilize your leverage, however that is. And you're also in this world with this attention economy, you know, people are going to try to maximize the value of that attention that they can. And, you know, you're going to get it however you get it. So whether the you know, YouTuber or whatever or any of this kind of stuff, it's like, you know, you're going to get it while you can get it however you can get it. And Harry and Meghan are doing that. And you know what? More power to them. I find the attention on the royals and all that stuff kind of interesting and sort of funky and weird to begin with. So it's all like, right, let's move on. You know, what just, speaking about, of attention, we're going we're to lose Adam any minute now. <laughs> yeah, what about? We lost Adam about, a minute ago. And yes, GoDaddy is a sponsor of this podcast through Dan.com. Uh, and both companies are pertinent to what I'm about to say, maybe not yeah. in a positive way. But hey, we, didn't, we am... didn't finish intros. We didn't finish intros. <laughs> yeah, oh, you, shit. Let me just All do right, your AKs and then intros. you can go right All in. Right, no, this go. is going to be a good no, segue no, into whatever no, you're going to no, say. No, no, I was just kidding. Yeah, forget no, nobody. No, we no. don't need, but forget the AK. It's, it's, I'm nobody AK. cares. I'm not, I'm nobody not, cares. I'm never going right, to so not do the AK. So I got, I come home from lunch today. All right. And I'm, cleaning up the inbox and there are fucking dozen emails from you know afternick godaddy dan.com uniregistry that are saying things like we're gonna That's jack right. your commission to 25 percent unless you're parking with us mm. and i haven't had that was all in the last hour so i haven't had the time to actually think this through beyond the initial gut reaction of I'm never selling a domain through your platforms ever again. Now, GoDaddy, we love you and we thank you for being a sponsor. But it is in your best interest for the community to talk about this. And quite frankly, I'm in a position in my life where I don't care. So, <laughs> But people uh, don't even know who you are because you didn't let me introduce you. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Who cares? But, Who's, this guy? Guy? But, Who's this guy? Who's this? I don't know. What do you what do y'all think about? You know, them coming in all gangster, like now you just can't leave and being like, you know, 25%. That seems excessive. Like, I feel bad sometimes that we charge 15% for brokerage. And I'm literally, we are busting our ass, spending tens of hours researching and blah, 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 getting a hold of people and convincing them and being told to go fuck ourselves and, you know, being virtually slapped in the face repeatedly a hundred times a day only to eventually come to a conclusion where we make a sale one or 2% of the time. Uh, and we charge 15%. And so it's like, uh, what, what grounds do you feel justified charging 25 other than, I guess you just feel like you can. And then if you can, does that just cause you can, does that make it a good business practice? Talks amongst yourselves. Let's they have shareholders. It's simple. I think twenty five is is definitely rough, but I think what's going to happen is just going to raise the prices. I don't think people are going like, to make less money. I think they're going to raise the prices, and and uh, but I think people are going to start shifting over to to Squad Help and and Brand Bucket for the for the lower lower value names, or the, I should say and, the average and more curation. Um. Oh, possibly. I mean, I don't know that that squad help and brand bucket oh, are curated. Yeah, are you mean they're just going to downgrade their expect their expectation? No, I think uh, my guess is that investors that are pointed to to uh, they're not not pointed to the servers, but are that that sell through Dan, et cetera, are just going to raise their price, right? Because if mm -hmm. not pointed to the servers, the brokers are going to reach out. And they're going to quote a higher price because of twenty five percent commission. I mean, I do that now. When it's twenty percent commission or fifteen percent commission, drives me nuts. Like I don't want to pay twenty percent mm -hmm. on Uni Registry just because like that person happened to reach out to a broker on Uni Registry ten years yep. ago. That drives yep. me crazy. Yep. Um, but but I built in that that delta right to cover those commissions. Um, you know when I quote price. But them, did you really? Them. Because I feel like that's also one of these bullshit arguments about like you know that, that goes into the same bucket for me as like when somebody says to me. 
you know, uh, you know, who's paying your fee? Is it the buyer or the seller? And it's like, look, you idiot, shut up. Like the buyer <laughs> always pays the fee. Shut up. You know, like just shut up. Like, like just use your fucking brain. Like has a seller ever reached into their pocket and like been like, oh, I'm going to wire you the fucking fee. No, there's no fee unless the buyer steps up and buys the domain. And so the buyer always pays the fee. Always. Unequivocally. Because, so in, the because case, the seller in the case that you're it. saying, yeah, but the, 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 I, I disagree. It That's the... No, the, we're on the, the we're buyer. On the, we're the buyer the shows up. Yeah, but it matters. It matters. The buyer shows up and says, this is the price. Is that within the realm of what I feel the domain is worth? Does the price match the value? Um, not the objective value, but the subjective value to the buyer. And if there's a mismatch, the deal doesn't happen or a negotiation ensues. But as we're talking about sort of buy it now, marketplace listings, let's just ignore that. So a deal doesn't happen if there's a mismatch between price and, and value expectation, a subjective value expectation. And if there is uh, a match within that range, then the deal happens. And so you can sit here all day and say, oh, I'm going to, oh, they up their commission by 10%. I'm going to bake that into my price. But who's to say that when you have that domain priced at $49,999, like you're going to add $10,000 to that because you're, you know, the commission went up? Like, no, you, you can't because the value is $49,000, right? You arrived at that price for a certain reason. And just because the cost went up doesn't mean you can just jack up the price. It just doesn't work like that, right? Like, like you were by the laws of economics, if you increase prices, you decrease demand. So um, so I don't think it's that easy. I don't think you could just skirt around and be like, oh, I'll just bake it in. Because no, I don't, I, you know, it doesn't, talking about, um, you know, basically it's binary. Either we've all been undervaluing domains and GoDaddy sees, a, you know, a, an arbitrage here where it's like, all right, these fools are all undervaluing their domains. We're going to just take a bigger 10% cut. Um, and that'll eventually sort of force the market up or um, they're going to shrink the market uh, effectively. Um, they'll make short term profits, but they'll shrink the aftermarket by, um, you know, creating more mismatches in um, domain prices and value expectation. Well, look, look at it like this. What is Squad Help and, and Brand Bucket charge? 30%. I, but they're charging 30 yeah, but but here's what I would so argue. Why, so, so why, very, why look at the names that but look at the names that they sell. Those names have virtually no intrinsic value. Okay, for the most part, on average. Now, sure, once in a while, Brand Bucket sells one word dot com, but for the most part, that's not their market. For the most part, their market is brandable, made up shit that on yesterday had very little or no inherent value. And today, because of some subjective want or need from a buyer, it achieved a certain price that probably falls algorithmically in some bucket. And the only reason that happened was because of a curation, whether it's automated or manual, it doesn't fucking matter, but it's some curation and let's say funnel created by brand bucket. Right? And so you could say, GoDaddy, maybe they can achieve higher prices because there's trust baked into the transaction. And so because of that trust factor, people are willing to pay a higher price. Maybe, maybe. I think that's a stretch. Um, brand Bucket, I, I've always, I've never sold a single domain with Brand Bucket because of the 30% commission. But, um, but I think, you know, again, I think it's easier to justify a 30% on a much smaller pool of domains because of a curation, because of a filtering ability, because, you know, they're doing more than just saying, here's some domain names, take your pay. Oh, I, I agree that, that they are the market maker. They're, they are bringing the yeah. client. No, there's, yes. no, there's no request yes. for brandable names. But my question for you is, for, on GoDaddy, University, Dan, et cetera, out of all the names that, they're, that the GoDaddy network sells, what percentage of those are brandables versus generic? And I don't know the answer. Because I, that's, that's a great, that. that's a good question. That's a good question. Right. But, but I, I would venture to guess that most of the names are in that like sub $3,500 range and 
are considered brandable. And there's probably a lot of margin for the seller in there. That's, that would be my guess. I don't know because there's no data. Mm-hmm. But, you know, maybe we can ask Paul Nix or, or, or Joe or somebody and they can, they can tell us. But that would be my guess yeah. that most of those names are down in that range and the margins are there. And either, either you know, the sellers will raise their price from $3,500 to $3,900 to cover the delta, the increased commission, or they'll just eat it like they do on Squad Help and Bread Bucket. I guess my point is, is that 25, 30% of an arbitrary name. Um, a low value, is, like you mean like an average is, value. Yeah, yeah. Of an arbitrary name, meaning like it doesn't have inherent value. It's like, you know. Yeah, brand I know. Um, yeah, yeah. Bookly, bookly.com, right? Bookly.com or, you know, bookster.com and something like that. Like that, that yesterday, that domain was worth a couple hundred bucks at auction. Tomorrow, that name's worth thirty-eight thousand dollars because somebody showed up and wants to buy it, right? And so, if you're the owner of that name, do you really care if you pay thirty percent to Brand Bucket because they basically raise that name up from the depths of hell to the surface for some person <laughs> to buy? Um, depths of hell, son. right? Whereas my and again, I'm speculating. I don't know. This is actually a really interesting conversation, but like. At Brand Bucket, what percentage of names do you think people came in and said like, oh, I wanted to, I, you know, they had a meeting. They said, I want to buy bookly.com. They went to bookly.com and land, it forwarded to a Brand Bucket landing page and they saw a price. They bought the domain versus the people that come into Brand Bucket and say, I'm looking for a name related to books and they're shown a curated list of 100 names and they pick Bookly. Right. What do you have? Any, what would you guess is like how many people are coming in cold and just looking for a curated list versus how many people are just literally going, oh, I want to buy Bookly. And they just happen to land on the on the, you know, the landing page for, you know, uh, 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 brand bucket. What do you think that split is? Um, yeah, my, my guess is that people get on there and then they search it for a keyword or they search for, you know, price range or something like that. I don't know. I mean, I, I know that data is out yeah, there. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I would actually, I'd love to know that. I'd love to know what that is. You know, know, GoDaddy, like just how many people are coming into GoDaddy and buying because they did a, a search or versus just landing on a particular name and then, you know, uh, it, it doesn't matter if it's on Sato's lander, if it's on Brand Bucket's lander, GoDaddy's lander, after Nick Dan, you know, I, I've always been of the opinion that it doesn't fucking matter, that that's a commodity. And it's literally, eight, I believe, roughly speaking, that 80% of people already know the name that they want when they land on it. And 20% of the people need a curation process. But that's I, I, I think that, I pretty think much that, gut. Not, I, there's not a I lot of data. I agree. I agree. Um, from a just uh, from a standpoint of like the whole universe of names that are sold every day, that's probably true. But it's also true that most names that are sold every day are sub thirty five hundred dollars, and I think a a big bulk of those names are brandable names because they're less expensive, and so people are not searching for that specific word; they're searching for something with a keyword or or a price point. But but the names that that you and I focus on, like it's, it's totally different, right? So the names that I sell, people aren't just like hand, happen to run across that name in a marketplace. Like they're searching for that specific name. Vast majority, I would say ninety nine, more than ninety nine percent of the names I sell are not just found based on some criteria. It's somebody that wants mm-hmm. that specific name, which is why yeah. I don't have my names in a marketplace because because I'd be selling a name that someone's. Spe- I did it once. I mean, I, I tested, I tested brand bucket, which is fine. It's a great marketplace. And I picked names that, that were more brandable, but the name that I sold was kind of generic. You know, it was, I think it was a, I don't know, a two word or something. And I'm sure the person that, that bought it would have bought it anyway. Yeah. They just wanted that name and yeah, so, it wasn't part so, of the curation. So if you've got your name, let's say it's a uh, bookly and you've got it on a landing page. I think that's, that's kind of a name that, it's still a pretty good domain. Like to me, the brandable stuff that sells is the stuff like, you know, Suvana, 
Shivana Lee or what, you know, like something that just doesn't I'm made up, something. You know, just made up something. Yeah. So for whatever reason, somebody is attracted to that. But like if, if to me, if GoDaddy is forcing you to use their landers, then any sale that comes from your direct, like somebody directly typing in Bookly and buying that domain, that should be a lower, a much lower commission. In fact, it's just ridiculous and absurd that it's not through, you know, brand bucket. Like if you're directing your domain to them, you're basically giving up a, a major part of like, First of all, you're giving up a commission. And second of all, you're sending your potential buyer to alternative ideas. I mean, it's yeah. just, I, sure. you know, I, I don't understand totally. why there's just this, there's this huge disrespect for that. You know, like, it's kind of like somebody <laughs> knocking on your knocking on your door of your house and saying, "Hey, can I can I buy your house?" And you're like, "Oh, well, wait a second. Let me call my real estate agent." You know, some people would do that, but like, it, it, I don't know. I, I I've always been bothered by that. Like that 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 commission is is twenty five percent, and they've done yeah nothing 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 no they added no brand. value yeah yeah yeah. So, I mean, this, 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 I, I, I just read that email, like right when you started talking about it, I was just going through my emails for the morning and, and I saw that and I was like, oh, I wonder what this is. So I clicked on it and I was like, oh boy, this is, and I sent you guys all an email too. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah I mean, I think some people, you know, they want the marketplace. They want the GoDaddy brand. They want a broker to negotiate on their behalf, but if somebody just clicks and buys it, but then, then they haven't really provided much service and and, yeah. and for me because i've been in this business for however many years the broker that that person reaches out to has way less experience than, than i do sure. almost 100%. in every case right the, like all of us on this on this show right now on this panel might have more experience than 99 percent of the brokers at at godaddy etc that are going to take that call not all of them and i'm not saying the brokers aren't good they are but they have over 100 brokers and they don't all have as much experience as we do most of them don't. Most, I, I would say, almost all of them combined out. probably don't have as much experience as you do. But you know, save for a few, right? And that's not to say anything negative against them. I think you know, again, they're 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 benefiting, and you know, their value is bringing the brand, bringing the the ecosystem for you know folks that don't want to do and go through that process. I agree though about the piece about the lender. If somebody's just literally typing in the name. And going through and just buying it, then then they're benefiting from just having the process and having you having put your names on their platform, right? So, and I think it comes down to what I said at the beginning. It's it comes down to it's like the Harry and Meghan thing. It comes down to leverage, right? They've established the brand. They bought out their biggest competition in Dan.com. So now it's like they're doing it because they can. It's not that they're I think in, in some instances they're providing value for certain people. So that came so. to my second question, which was if they're doing it, then they obviously feel that they can, right? Mm -hmm. And then is that a good business decision, right? Just because you can doesn't always mean you should. And to me, I feel like that's really a, a I don't know. It's really cool. You know what I mean? Like, from, it, well, yeah, it's, it really, it, that, fe that feels wrong. That feels like too much. It's like, well, I love you that know, we're getting like, this feedback I, I, from I'm you guys. I'm willing to take a lot of shit, and then it's like, no, nah, now you spit my coffee. Our relationship is over. You know, like I like that we're getting know. an emotional response from you guys, and that you're really like talking about this, like right after you got the email, because otherwise you wouldn't get this. So to the audience, that's a pretty interesting view, because they are getting this, like your visceral response to this email, which I think is a really interesting aspect, and. um but yeah, I mean, look, I, well, it's a business decision, right? Like they ran the numbers uh, to Adam's point. You know, they've got shareholders and people to be accountable to. They've got targets to meet. We're into a new year. They've got, you know, they've got growth targets and things that they've got to, that they've got to hit. So it's like, how do you get there? Well, you know, you can raise price. This is effectively raising prices and assuming that you can. Then you're talking about almost this price elasticity type of analysis based on what's what. And I think if you, as you remove competitors from the market, Right. Then, you know, I think it's common sense that then you potentially have that ability to then raise your own prices because where else are you going to go? Because you're comparing thereby, using, thereby, thereby you know, creating more competition, though. Potentially. Well, then that's the thing. So then it's like, all right, well, what's going to be what's going to be the result of this? Less people selling names, potentially other market participants stepping into the space to fill a vacuum to say, hey, you know, you've now kind of created this situation with your customers. And, and, and that's, that's part of my question. Right. It's like. 
to me, that's so obvious. Like, how is that a good business decision? Well, again, I think for all the reasons that, you know, this, and it's, it's, it's a Paul Nix question, you know, and I'm sure that they, they don't look, and you know, Paul, like he didn't make, they don't make, and you know, Joe, they no, don't make any 100%, decisions they, lately. Like, you know, no, this was 100%, done 100%. I, it's just, to me, I love it's to see like, the analytics on it too, you know, because you know that they're looking at all this well, data. I mean, look, so in the short term, right, which is unfortunately the way that public companies are forced to think, or at least that's the way they're incentivized to think. In the short term, the next couple of quarters, it's going to be great, right? I mean, they're doing, I don't know what the number is, but they've got a huge aftermarket. And if they're going from taking 15% to 25% of that aftermarket, they are effectively, you know, let's say roughly doubling their, um, you know, their take. I mean, that, that, that's millions and millions. It's going to be right? million, tens, tens of millions of dollars, tens of millions. Of dollars. Yeah. So, um, you know, but. And I guess the same could be said about most public decisions, right? It's like public company decisions. It's like a lot of it is short-term good, long-term bad. Um, but to me, it's just like the it's bulk only of domains, the it's bulk only of domains are held yeah. by so few hands. And so it's like, you know, you do something like this and it's like, you just know you're bitch slapping somebody. I don't, gonna, I don't, I don't know. I don't. I, I I disagree that it's long term. I, I, I so re- help me God, as I sit here today, I will not sell a domain at twenty five percent commission. I don't care if Paul Nix literally hand delivers a sale to me at my desk. Twenty five percent of my name is too much. Sorry. I, no, I, look, I agree. Twenty five percent is too much. But, but the buyer pays the commission. Gonna, I don't think there's going to be <laughs> running for the hills. I think people are going to stick with like. Maybe FD gets more business and, you know, there's there's some shifting around. Fine. But I think the bulk of sales will still happen through Afternet, GoDaddy, Dan, et cetera. You can register. I mean, they just have so many names from so many places and so many yeah. investors that people are just going to suck it up. Investors are going to suck it up or raise their prices and not really move because there's so much exposure. I mean, just look at the, you know, the reg, the GoDaddy reg path alone, right? That probably has the most exposure. The strength I, of their. I, I would love to know. Like, what do you think? Do you think that's where the majority of their active market happens? Is in the reg path? The yeah. strength of their brand and the their ecosystem is, they... is enormous. You right? would know, Adam, right? We, we, we used to have uh, what was that called? I mean, you weren't working with GoDaddy, but you probably have some insights. What was your uh, thing oh, called? Where you guys did the that you kind of like inserted yourself into the middle of. Uh, that's on uh, domain agents, but no, I think yeah, the, yeah exactly. I think, the, I think the problem with the registration path now is like go go look at it. The registration path is just like you know you you put in. It's just like what I said about the landing page. You put in bookly.com, you type it in, and it's like okay, bookly.com is available on the aftermarket for this price. And oh, by the way, here's the nineteen dollar ones that you know you can buy yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah, so yeah, like yeah. it's it's like a garage sale, you know, like you know you could you could buy or or whatever like a flea market. You know, you could yeah. buy this uh, Rolex, a real Rolex, or you could buy this one that looks exactly like it. So yeah. I, I don't know. I, I have a problem with that as well. So, but um, you know, everybody wants their their product in front of the registration path. So GoDaddy is just making bank off of that as well. So um, you know, yeah, I, would I, not, I would not be surprised if big portfolio owner, if you've got you know a hundred thousand names parked. At GoDaddy or on After Nick, and you call up your rep and you're like, Look, I'm not taking this hit. They'll say, Well, for your account, you know, we will. Yeah, start. okay, fine, whatever. Yeah, but uh, yeah. fair, fair. But it's the principle that we're discussing here. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's nearly double, you know. So that's this is like, this is like rough. US Congress debating, you know, some of the like, 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 COVID measures. It's like, no, we're, we're, we're doing this to protect everybody. And it's like, yeah, but are you going to stay home? And it's like, no, so, I ain't staying home. You know, I'll take that this party is, with this you is, next, yeah. next week. <laughs> right. So Drew, dialing it back to what you said, if Paul Nix came, came to you with a million dollar offer on a demand that's worth, you know, to you 200,000, you're going to say no, because he's, you know, that he's making 25% additional on that million. I mean, that's what you said earlier was that, that <clears throat> yeah, you've got. Yeah. So, so, I mean, my thinking on that, and again, this is, as JT pointed out, all very visceral and emotional because we've just received this notice, and it is a big deal. This is a very big deal. Um, um, And so it's not like I've thought about any of these ideas um, 
you know, at length. But I would say that if Paul Nix called me and uh, had a million dollar offer for a domain that I thought was worth 250, um, obviously I would be inclined to take that. Um, but my thinking on this is that if somebody's willing to pay a million dollars for that domain, if I simply say no to Paul and I put a little landing page <laughs> on the domain that says, Hey, you know, $999,000, yeah, $999, <laughs> $999, $999, $999, <laughs> yeah. right here, click right here. We're going to process the domain through, you know, escrow.com. <clears throat> My guess is that deal happens anyways, right? Sometimes, right? Like, I mean, well, do you do that? I mean, so a couple it. of things. Wait, I think you touch on some things that really, and I got a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, so by the way, I appreciate you not going too far down the political rabbit hole, Drew, when you were talking about Congress and COVID and your, your, your light well, reference. No, your, it, 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 no, no, hold on. It's just and, about, wait, wait, wait. And your, about, wait. And your light reference to, to Gavin rules, Newsom at French Laundry. Wait, hold on. Actually, well, hold, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gavin Newsom at the French Laundry, right? And, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, hey, nobody can leave their house. Oh, hey, we're going to go party over here. But um, hey, um, the uh, but I think one of the things you bring up, right? Some of this is about stickiness, right? And some of it is also where you know a key aspect of this of the notice and decision is, hey, if you still want to pay fifteen percent, you just have to park your names with us, right? Like just you know point your names, and I think that's where you start to get into some of this where you could argue that um, you know. Because otherwise, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you list a name at after Nick, right, where you actually point it is, you know, up to you. So if you have it pointed to your own lander and somebody goes there and buys it from you, they're not paying the commission at after Nick. But if you're using their name servers, it is. So now you're talking about actually there is a bit of a discounted rate if they are going direct to the lander based on the fact that you are pointing it to their, you know, their, their landers, right? <laughs> well, um, yeah, but that's secondary to the fact that no, you don't I know. necessarily need or to what they're saying is, Yeah, or I mean, what they're saying actually is if you're coming in brand new now, then you're faced with this, oh, it's actually cheaper if I, if they come through the lander, not if you're a legacy customer, it's like, oh, you're just paying what you would have paid anyway, so it doesn't feel as, as good, right? But I'm just saying, and again, there's a stickiness piece where they obviously would like the names in the ecosystem, the parking, the other pieces to that. You know, I think that's one of the things that, you know, and, and I and I say this, you know, and, and you know, I probably even said this to Paul personally, like, you know, his understanding of the full ecosystem of domains is 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 is, is broad and, and comprehensive. Holistic. And Holistic. exactly. And, you know, and that's a key piece. And, and GoDaddy doesn't miss that. And, and Paul really helps to drive that. And I think that's a really important thing. Um, so, you know, what does that idea, have to do with the topic? So what I'm saying is, is that, well, it's about stickiness as well, because the idea that how do you almost like, because if I'm Paul, why am I bringing you an offer that you're then going to end around if you potentially can? So I'm going to create as many ways to prevent some of that kind of stuff is happening, which means getting you to point your domains to GoDaddy is a key aspect here, which is also part of what they're trying to do with the price tier, if you will, right? The 15% right. versus 25%. GoDaddy or one of their networks. Now, now for me, all my names are, are, are part of the unit registry. So the increase doesn't really affect me. I'm still paying the fifteen percent. So, I mean, I, I can see why they're doing it because they want the parking, and a lot of people are pointing their names at Dan, and so it's not going to affect them either. People are still upset about it, even though they're parked at Dan, and it doesn't doesn't change what they're going to pay. Well, and you bring up a point that I brought up earlier when I talk about leverage. Like every platform you're mentioning, some of the biggest names in the space are all platforms that have now been acquired by GoDaddy, right? They just continue to go and just gobble up the universe and make it so, so that it's like, where else you going to go? If you park with after nickname servers, do you have the option to not have cash parking, like, like you know, normal parking pages and just have a for sale page? Or are you opting in to have ads on your domain? That's a good question. They talk about pointing the name servers. They don't talk about ads. So well, I, I'm but assuming they're saying they do. I believe they did say the word park. You have to park your domains. Right. But that doesn't uh, that doesn't mean you can't you you can. I think you could. Well, I don't know. I haven't dug into it. But if you're just yeah, your, integrating yes. GoDaddy cash parking. So it is. It's it's it, these are going to be cash parking. Well, cash parking is the equivalent of bonus is equivalent of, you know, yeah, parking. Yeah. Crew. It's 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 GoDaddy's parking platform. Yeah, yeah. It's an ad fee. Exactly. So. It seems, or at least at this stage, they're not differentiating that if you point your name service, it's going to have a park page on it. No? It's going to have an ad feed. So the question is, if you yeah. point the domain to their servers and you opt for 
a no ad feed, just a for sale page, how does that affect the commission structure? So that I think that's a question that we need to. Is yeah. there, uh, is that a toggle? Like, how do you opt out of the ad feed? Well, you can on, Reg- on Uni, you can. And yeah, it does yeah, say. Yeah, but this isn't Uni. This is, this is. No, no, no. This is, this is U- no, it is Uni. I mean, because. because is it's, it it's Uni's feed? Is that what they got? Uni Landers and Dan Landers, GoDaddy Landers. Um, After Nick, I don't Wait, think has Landers, right? Is GoDaddy Cash Parking, did they take Frank's feed? Is that what happened? But they had a feed. They've always had a feed for cash it, parking. It just it, all it says is all it says is the new commission model rewards sellers choosing to do more business with our platform by using any of our for sale landers options and opt in to Afternix distribution network. If your domain points to one of our name servers, Dan Afternix or Unirate, ah, when it, okay, when it sells, okay. then you receive fifteen percent commission rate. Got it. And, so then, and that's regardless that, of whether or not it sells through the landers or through the network. Correct. So, correct. So, JT, you're right on that. It doesn't. It doesn't say you have to have an ad feed. Well, what what does this mean? It says import your own leads. We'll continue to operate at five percent. Is that a, that's a Dan thing? That's a Dan thing. So anyway, um, you know, I think we covered a lot of ground on this. I think it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, I think we can probably, unless you guys want to continue to to talk about some of the the nuance here, but I think it's you know. Well, I'll add, I'll add one thing is, you know, we talked about squad help and, and, and brand bucket, which are arguably, and I just talked about this in the DN journal sort of, uh, uh, preview, uh, uh, what do you yeah, call preview it? Preview of end of year, you know, like At the end predictions, of year, and predictions, yeah. And predictions. Um, you know, there's two primary, um, brandable marketplaces, right? And those two are still entirely independent owned by a, a person, not a company. And so like something's happening. I, I just feel in my bones that something's going to happen there. Right now they are sitting in a, in a rowboat and GoDaddy's like Jaws. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? I mean, like, but but how water. hard would it be, you know, for GoDaddy to, to call Margo and be like, Hey, here's our price or, you know, mm. squad help. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, but I, I, what kind of, no, yeah, what kind of numbers I, are I they don't making know. I don't think it's that big. I don't think it's. Yeah. I don't think it's enough that it matters. You know, GoDaddy. So really, it's not even about the the revenue. It's it's about like how many names are on the platform, right? And so like, like I think the Dan dot com acquisition. Um, you know, it's likely more about. Oh wow, lots of people are now pointing their domains to Dan dot com, and I think if there's one takeaway we can get from this, um, this notification, it's that clearly GoDaddy is valuing. Um, significantly having names pointed to their platforms. They want all the traffic from all these names, whether it's for the traffic value or the sort of moat that is created data. by bringing in these the data. Or the data is just, but right. they are valuing, they're putting a very high value on having these names in their ecosystem, pointing to their ecosystem. And so, so, so is, it, is it data? Is and it I, parking, and, and I, I suspect personally that they value that above the revenue uh, mm. probably because they see a longer term revenue um yeah i think it's both i mean like we talked about in the no, short of course term it's both, but, in the but, short term they're going to see an immediate hit that's going to make their shareholders excited that's going to please the street right and then the question is as you guys talked about for long term you know short term gain for long term pain to what Braden said, and, and I agree, I don't know that it's that obvious that there'll be this long-term pain, right? I think you make a really good point, Drew, where you say, look, you have a lot of domains that are consolidated with a few people. Um, and it's very possible that those people that matter enough to move the needle that are be will, willing to move their stuff off of After Nick now can have a conversation with their account rep and potentially still maintain whatever deal they might have, which might even be less than the 15% that everybody else pays now anyway, right? Yeah. Um, what I think, I think it's just interesting that like, if you, I don't, couldn't have been more than two months ago that we were on this show talking and, and the consensus was there's a very clear trend that commissions are trending down. That that this is a commodity, and that commission rates at marketplaces, and I think this was even your comment, Braden, that those commission rates are going to trend down. Not not to isolate you, because I think we it was a consensus. Everybody was like, "Yeah, of course, clear. Look at this." You know, it's like, "Oh, most meaningful new competitor to enter the market was Dan.com. Dan.com came in at nine percent instead of fifteen. That was standard." 
Um, you know, you had somebody, I mean, you know, somebody else is at five or six, but it was clear that people are racing to the bottom because the only way to compete with GoDaddy, in their view was to have a lower rate, but it seems that GoDaddy, uh, did the math and doesn't see it that way. And they think that, you know, what is making these domains sticky isn't the commission rate as much as, you know, some other value proposition that they believe they offer the domain owner. But I, if you, you know, but I, if I don't you roll, know. If you roll up all the marketplaces, then there isn't competition. So Dan was cheaper and then, you know, they became a target for GoDaddy. And then the well, and look, this goes and then, and what know, Drew, 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 what you just said. The fucking what? universe is the universe deplores a vacuum. So if you are engineering a vacuum, then you are literally knowingly opening a space for a meaningful competitor to enter the market as opposed to these kind of small, relatively un Okay, but, but listen listen to this. So, like, so people Brand can Bucket, pay, I can assure you, is not a competitor to GoDaddy. Like, uh, every, it, look, look, it's not as, you know, it, they certainly do compete to a degree, but as you say- No, GoDaddy, they don't. No, they don't. GoDaddy, it, is a, it is a meaningless amount of- but, Business but, is meaningless, but Dan, Margo. But Dan, no, Dan, no, no, but real to GoDaddy, like, I mean, like of course, this not, this no, is no, my but, point. Wait, wait, real quick. I shout out, Margo, like, big love. But, oh, but yeah, I, yeah, yeah. No, of is, course, you know, like, like, you know, I don't know, to, Margo. To overall, shout out but, to National Lampoon's but, Christmas but so, Vacation. Wait, but hold so on. so was Dan, right? Hold let me finish the point. So, okay, was, so was Dan, but we're talking about getting into the, you know, the kind of the, the niche various domain markets. And, and. And Squad Help and 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 Brand Bucket. I mean, I don't know how many names they have collectively, a million names or something. I I, I don't know. But it, it would be easy for for Go to take those two marketplaces out. And then they've rolled up the whole brandable marketplace ecosystem, right? Even if they take one of them, and I think it would not be hard to buy those out. And then what? Now, now you've got a 30% commission rate, and GoDaddy could come around and be like, you know what? Probably the optics of that. Let me fit, let me finish. GoDaddy could say it's no longer thirty percent if you're parked on it, at one of our networks. It is now fifteen percent. I bet you're not going to hear much complaining from the industry if they buy one of these marketplaces and lower the commission. And I think that to Drew's point, where he was going off about saying, like you know, about competing with Go, you know, the one thing that GoDaddy doesn't have to do is compete with GoDaddy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like when you talk about any of these other market participants, and yes, you know, it deplo- there's the deplore is a vacuum, but does it really create a vacuum when you've created, does a monopoly naturally just create a vacuum, right? And is the commission so high and offsetting against any of the other benefits being the scale and everything else and the branding and the access and the searches and all the stuff that comes from working with GoDaddy, does that, you know, does that not offset the potential increase in commissions on some of these sales that for a lot of folks wouldn't otherwise get anyway? And, you know, so I think it's going to be interesting. And I think there is the bigger piece of just, you know, GoDaddy's trying to basically like, you know, own the Internet. And you know what? Shout out to them. I think it's, you know, you big, big players make big moves. And I think at the end of the day, you know, it'll be interesting to see. They could have done the opposite and say, hey, we're going to lower prices if you park your stuff with us. But why not just take the extra cash in the meantime, especially if you don't have anybody else for that can, that, that'll take your customers from you. So because keep in mind, too, you also have a situation like Epic, which is like, you know, there that, that existed for a moment until that turned into a complete dumpster fire. So it's like, you know, it's even less of uh, less competition. So. <laughs> Right, well, <laughs> you're like you, you know that he's like the largest shareholder, one of the shareholders. He's not the largest shareholder. He's an unfortunate shareholder. That should be Braden. That'll be Braden's <laughs> memoir when it comes to Epic. It'll be the unfortunate. It'll be the unfortunate unfortunate shareholder because that's what it is, right? Homeboy unfortunately got stuck in a, in a relatively untenable situation, and it's like, what are you going to do? You know. Um, and uh, so, yes, I do empathize with you in that scenario, my dude. Um, you know, but at the same time, you know, it is like, you know, let it burn, let it burn. Um, but, um, no, it's all, it's all good. Um, <laughs> let's segue, let's segue. And I'm going to say with that, I think, I think Epic is, is bigger and more valuable and more sustainable than you, than you think. Hey, you're look, you're in the meetings. I, you know what I mean? I'm not, I can, I, I I'm throwing rocks from the, uh, you I know, think the, the, the is, peanut gallery. I but, 100% agree with that sentiment. But there's a window of opportunity for that sentiment to be true. And that window will slam closed. 
probably in the next six months. And that is a whole nother dialogue in itself. And I'm not trying to put you in an awkward spot, Brady. It was funny for a second, but we can keep it moving. The, um, you know, cause again, I know that's a, that's a challenging spot to be in. And, and like I said, I'm just, I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm I, I think it's, I think it's a potentially Muppets. very valuable business, but it's just well, tough in the spot. I think it, All right. you know, there's a lot of, there's a we lot. We haven't even actually though. done anything that was supposed to be involved in this show. I have not even we given it. So here we go. News. That's, but that Below makes it good. me, a.k.a. Yeah, I true. got my boy, Andrew <laughs> Rosner, a.k.a. Morpheus, a.k.a. The Dirt Diggers. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. I'm Move going on, to a.k.a. Move on, move on. No, We're I just got to at least no, tell no, people who you are. They don't know. Nobody what cares. If, what if it's their nobody first show cares. and they're like, who is this? Who's this dynamic guy? You know, like, who's they, just they, they, like, kicking all this truth, throwing these truth bombs out? It Come says on. Drew right there. Right on his, yeah, right exactly. On his feet, his Sniper, Bobby Swagger, a.k.a. Domain Drew, Dom. Drew got what I need, a.k.a. Every Rosner has his thorn, a.k.a. Well, he has Matthew. to do it. He a.k.a. Blackbeard, the Domain Pirate, a.k.a. Never Going to Give Drew Up. It's like my nine-year-old. <laughs> like, you just can't. You just, <clears throat> well, it's like my ten-year-old. Like, don't do that. Don't touch that. You're like, they're like, why? <laughs> just don't touch it. It's my- very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> My, t- my it's my 10 year old and i've referenced this before like his thing he was always so difficult as a kid and he was from the time he was a baby he was difficult and his thing I, he was must have been six seven years old at one point and we tell him don't do Careful, that don't you know everything lives on the internet forever right yeah yeah hey he, i'll tell him this to his face and you know he would be like don't do you know we'd be like don't do that don't do that and he actually said he's like I'm never not going to do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we joke around. The, that's his shit. He's like double negative. Like, I'm never not going to do that. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, man, you, you know, anyway. All right. So, uh, well, either way, I got him in there sort of quiet, uh, AKA cancel Adams, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, so look, but I think this is important and this is an important topic. And, um, I know we went off way off, but this isn't a tangent. This is domain content that is important for the space. And I think it's just good to get feedback. I mean, look, we've got a great relationship with GoDaddy. We've got a great relationship with Afternoon with Dan. Dan's a sponsor. I mean, you know, puts us in a funky spot to even talk on these things, but if we're not open, honest, and transparent about how we feel about this stuff, and especially getting to give people this insight in real time, then we're doing a disservice to our audience. So, hundred percent. So, you know, 100%. And I, we're going to keep it real here at Domain Sherpa always. All the time. We don't and, care. and being respectful. I mean, look, this is like, you know, and I, and I Most think of that the time respectful. And I appreciate their gangster. Like, let's Not go, always. you know? Yeah, well, you know, we'll be respectful. We'll try to be respectful. At least I will. Um, so, AKA, I got to write in that one, though. The, uh, you know, the. Uh, AKA, not the host. The, the unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, is that what we said? The unfortunate investor. Unfortunate investor. <laughs> um, no, that's Braden. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I'm adding that to the. I'm adding it to my AKA list, so it'll be there on the next one. Um, but yeah. So well, look, it remains to be seen. I think. I think it's going to be short term. Obviously, short term bullish, and I'm long term bullish because I think that the the impact that they will have in being able to sort of acquire more of the mind share and the the parking and the traffic and all of those things that, like I said. They understand the value of the life cycle, the ecosystem, the broadness, the oh. comprehensiveness of it. And that is going to continue to add value in ways that we won't see for a while. So by the time oh. there's any sort of negative drag, I think that positive stuff will, will outweigh it. So um, so, so I'm bullish. But anyway, all right. So that is the intros. And uh, so you guys want to well, play the domain game? or, or Again, or? it just depends on the perspective you're looking at it from, right? If you're like, yo, I'm a GoDaddy shareholder. And it's like, yeah, of course you're bullish. Right. If you're looking at it from like, I'm a portfolio owner who's trying not to get, you know, then no, 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 no. <laughs> Billy, little bit. Billy, just little bleep bit that. Less, I don't even know what that is. I don't even know bullish. what that term is. I don't even know what that is. A little bit less <laughs> bullish. A little, little bit less, less bullish. Little less, little less bullish. Um, I was I had something else to say. Um, yeah, if we own shares, do we have to disclose that? Like, if I'm a GoDaddy shareholder, if I own a couple of shares, does that have to be something like not, this? Is not financial advice, you know? I, you know, yeah, we didn't provide you're, you're the lawyer. Advice. I know that's what I'm yeah. saying. I feel like all of a sudden, Dude, I'm like, I, oh, have man. To, I have to tell this guy all the time stuff that's <laughs> like the legal, it's like in the legal realm. And he's like, and I'm like, yo, you're the lawyer in the room. Like, <laughs> man, here's the thing, you know, about that. So I went to Brooklyn Law School, you know what I mean? And <laughs> I got to tell you, like, I had a good time. I got, well, wait, some- isn't that you're talking about Bill and Ted's most excellent night law school? Exactly. I'm talking about where Joe Pesci went in My Cousin Vinny. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Our, our alumni is our famous pop culture references that weren't actually lawyers in real life. Um, our most famous and Geraldo Rivera. I mean, we are a potpourri of fucking 
of 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 fuckery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, uh, no, it's all good. Big shout out to 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 the school, to the people, to my really close good friends that I met there. Smart, smart, very capable attorneys. Um, you know. Anyway, but, uh, but welcome hey, you to know, the main so, Sherpa. <laughs> no, no. Well, you know, I think it's an interesting point though too. You know, when you talk about because it, it is about competition. So then on the parking side, right? Do we look at now? Do you look at the landscape for parking and say, well? You know, because is it a benefit now? Are you trying to even weigh, you know, to see how effective GoDaddy is for parking? We use Botus and we like Botus a lot. Like big shout out to Matt. I think Botus does a, a great job. Um, you know, so is there an opportunity? Does this somehow seg, you know, sort of bleed over into some of the competition in these other areas that aren't necessarily into brokerage, into the 100%, registration, into the other stuff? hundred you know? percent. There are, there are a bunch of industries all wrapped up in the domain community, right? In the domain mm-hmm. industry, there's sub industries, including parking, and they want parking revenue. And when you move from BOTUS to GoDaddy parking or in registry, et cetera, et cetera, you're probably going to less, get less of a payout, probably. Right? I don't know, but you might make less money on your parking, but you're going to make it up. Go to any makes money in parking. So they're not talking about the parking revenues and what, what the split's going to be. Mm-hmm. Probably less. Yeah. And it, I think technically, aren't the parking companies not allowed to disclose the split technically? I think that's in their contract with Google. I don't think they're allowed to disclose what the split is with their customers. I would, I would, well, I would render, I, I some, I would render a legal sponsor. opinion, but I'd have to ask you what my legal opinion I, is. You know what I'm saying? I remember, I remember somebody at domain sponsor explaining it to me once. Like, well, it's possible that uh, no, I'm, I'm sure that that you that the parking companies can't say what their split is with GoDaddy, but they could probably say what their split is with, mm, with maybe. I, I don't, it's been a long time. I don't remember, but I think. It literally was between them and the customer. They're not allowed to disclose. Well, but either way, I think but, that, you know. But that was another piece that I think is interesting because it's like it could end up creating either opportunity or it could be another thing where it's like, oh shit! Like now, you know, it's more competition, more pressure coming from the GoDaddy side on these other ancillary areas. Like you know, because if, if the goal is to try yeah. to pull more of the parking, then you know, then it's or it could be a, an opportunity for some of those competitors to say, hey. You know, let me let me show you how I can provide value to help make up some of that difference or whatever. Look, look, part of look, Paul and GoDaddy, you know, they're they're the best at what they do. And, you know, they're not doing a thing just for that one thing. And yeah, just well, and that's like what we when, said. When, that's what just said. like when GoDaddy, you know, buys a portfolio. They're not just taking a portfolio and they're like, oh, great. You know, we paid whatever, two buck, 200 bucks a name and these names are worth uh, whatever, thirty five hundred dollars, and that's the spread. No, man, they they, they want more main, more more names under management. They want to get those premium names up at the top that they got super super cheap. You know, they they want. Oh, yeah. well, they, they, they want, want more names expiring I mean, at the registrar, whole, rolling through the rolling through the expiry, like all that stuff. The life cycle, a whole world and the ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. Of, of benefits that they get just buying a portfolio, just like when they raise the commission, but you have to park. You know, they're getting they're getting a whole bunch of stuff. Yep. And I'm, I don't mean the, the portfolio names expiring because they're their own names, but I just mean more names under management in general, um, you know, more customers, like all that stuff, the traffic, the data, like all that. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a serious, legit thing. All right. Well, do you guys want to play the domain game? You want to go into the name, Jake and the Jet? Like, do we have names to talk about? Um, you guys got some buys, some sales. Like, well, let's do that. Let's go into the, let's go into the domain game. That's what we do here on Domain Sherpa, where all roads lead to domains. Adam, do you have... Do you have a buy or a sell? I got a buy, and I'm not sure that <laughs> this was the end of the year buy uh, on GoDaddy. Um, I think it was on GoDaddy. Well, don't tell uh, us. Oh, well, I'm I guess you sure. could say where you bought it, but you know, you just give us the name. And it was it was there wasn't a 25 percent commission. Let's just put it that way. Um, <laughs> and Andrew, you're gonna have to Drew, you're gonna have to tell me whether or not this is a, a good buy. I bought Yachtin. J A C H T E N dot com. J A T C C J A C H E A. I'm sorry, H T E N. In my in, in my German Yachten. Oh, Yachten. Yachten. Uh, uh, all right. Well, here. Let's. Uh, you know what? Let's before we get all. You know, Is that yacht in German? I don't yes. know. 
<laughs> I believe it is, isn't it? No. Um, oh, wait, no. Uh, Drew's got a German wife, so you'd think he would. Might yeah, have some kind of- and, and he is, and he is one, and he is one who yachts, by the way. So he, uh, you know what? It, I, I think it's one of these situations where it's like, uh, so I, I speak pretty well German, but my grammar is not good because <laughs> I didn't learn it super. Grammarly. I speak pretty well, good German words. Hey, let's put it on the phone and just show everybody what but you think you. I, I don't think. I'm just trying to look it up. Hold up. I, I think that this is like one of those weird forms. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Tell me what you. What, yeah, what do you What do you think he paid for yachting dot com? So put it on your phone. Remember, everybody, get your get your oh. phones up. But we're hold still up, trying to figure this up. out. I'm I'm looking it up. It looks like yachting is Dutch and and yeah, I think it actually is correct for Dutch, but it's not German. It means to chase. J a c h t looks like it's yacht in German, and yachting is Dutch. It so it looks like from a yeah, person. It's to, it, in Dutch, it's the ver- the action of the verb to chase. So to chase, to hunt, shooting, that type of thing. You know what I'm saying? So, all right. Well, um, why don't y'all give me put get your phones up and let's put a number on the board. Let's go. 2023, first mm. domain game of the year. Let's see what happens. Hold on. <laughs> Yachtin, y'all on some other shit. Yachtin.com. Yachtin.com. I have right. a lot of one word German domains and I've never sold one. <laughs> In dot com. Let's not come on, man. You know? Um, all right. So Stop. what what do I think you paid? Yeah, what do you think he paid? That's what we're talking about right now. Domain game. We'd play this a thousand times. That's the way this game works. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. What do you got? Oh, <laughs> wow. All right. So JT, for those of you who are only listening, JT's got four ninety nine, Braden's got five hundred, and Andrew has one thousand two hundred, and is that eighty eight dollars? One thousand two hundred and eighty eight dollars. All right, five seventy three. Oh man, Braden gets the point. It's a close one, but um, all right. Yeah, so, so there are there are pictures of these mega yachts, and uh, I own uh, boating dot com. So I thought, ah, uh, you know, I'll just throw it in there, and uh, and so who knows? I don't know. It's is it German? Is it Dutch? I I don't know. But my Google images come up with uh, mega yachts, so yeah, I thought a lot uh, of boats. Give it give it a boats. whirl. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right. So Braden, nice job. If I went five hundred one. I actually had 650 at one point, and then I was like, no. I'm so, gonna, interestingly, you know. yachts.com still, still, just sold, right? Eric Borges, Borges, uh, Borges no, I um, 650, I would have won. Just sold, just sold yachts.com yeah. for good 350, 350? Yeah. Yeah. Was? Uh, no, 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 no. I think he paid. For 600? No, he paid. Or paid 300, he paid and he sold for 550 six. or six. Yeah, yeah, six, I think nine, that's six. right. Which yeah. is fine. I I thought he yeah. completely overpaid to begin with. For, for I did too. I thought he, he was, he I was thought he way overpaid. He was going to build it his out. money quickly. Yeah, it did not. It did not work. And then he sold it for double. And you know what? For a short period project, like in a year or less. It, yeah, it's a win. He still made three hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Well, yeah. before commissions. Yeah. Have you guys ever been to his website that's got all his different projects on it? I forget. I don't remember yeah. what the domain is. He's got some funky shit. He he's built some really cool stuff. He's got like all this weird tools and AI tools and like he's got a lot of weird cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Little gadgets and toys and software programs that he's built that are kind of fun. You can go down that rabbit hole yeah. and spend a few days. Well, yeah, let's fig- cool stuff. yeah, let's figure out what the site is and we'll put it on the uh, we'll put it on the page, you know what I mean? Like yeah. big shout and, out to Eric. Eric is a great guy. Impulse. He's just a is it impulse.com? Impulsecorp.com. Impulsecorp.com. Corp. Com. Impulsecorp.com. Yeah. So check it out. Yeah. yeah. He's, anyway, a, he's, he's a, a, he's a really interesting traffic dude. coming out of it all of a sudden. Where's it, where's it coming from? Um, yeah. yeah. Big shout out to, big shout out to Sorry. Eric. All right. Well, let's keep it moving, right? Let's, uh, Brady, what do you got? You got yep. a buy or a sell? Um, I have a sale. All right. Of, um, of what, of what to name is it? Um, I sold this, uh, just, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, less than that, uh, sexual assault attorney.com. 
That took that took a turn. You know what I'm saying? That was a bit of a wild ride there as you were going through the name. I was like, ooh, I don't know. We might not be able to talk about this one. But, you can talk about it. All right. So sexual <laughs> assault attorney. Dot com and it was a sale. Sexual assault attorney.com. It was a sale. Put in your numbers. What did you sell it for? Hey Drew. This was a sale. This was a sale. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was a sale. Uh, all right. Um, sexual assault attorney.com. It was a sale. All right, y'all got numbers on your phones. Adam, you good? Drew, you ready? All right. Ready, three, three, two, one, flip it. All right. Okay. We got a pretty, pretty widespread here. So Adam is at 7,500. Just got a text to call your mom. Um, Drew is 38,000 and I am 50,000. So let's see how the, let's see how the dude did selling sexual assault attorney.com. Adam is the winner. Thirty nine ninety eight four grand. Whoa. Wow. That's, a, that's pretty light, man. I, you know, no, it, it's, it's actually not. Well, no, I know. No. <laughs> I know nobody knows better. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it's not. <laughs> well, yeah, and obviously don't... when it comes, comes to legal names, nobody's better than you. And, um, you know, just real quick to justify why I shot so high, I just feel like, you know, in this sort of time of, you know, um, you know, where it's, it just seems pretty topical. You know, I thought maybe somebody was going to reach like that, you know, has a boutique firm that does these kinds of things or like, you know, specifically fights for these types of cases, these types of rights for victims. Um, you know, maybe it was, uh, you know, worth, worth a little bit more, but yeah. So, so this will probably go, and I haven't looked it up. It's probably, it was probably purchased. By a what? It was probably a purchase by a defense attorney, like mm-hmm. a criminal lawyer. So defending oh. kind of cases. Oh. Not the other way around. Yeah, for sure. Probably. Um, actually, I mentioned for it sure. to Lisa. And she's like, why didn't we keep that for the firm? I'm like, because it's more defense related. She's like, oh, okay. Mm. Um, so three word um, names like this, they're tough. I mean, I get my offers are usually like a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bucks. Usually pretty low. Um, Four thousand. It was was the bin on that name. I just have a ton of these. They sell very slowly. They're tough. I mean, this was like a hand reg from uh, yeah, 2004. No, I think, I think 2004. The, like, I've had yeah. this name a long time. Yeah. No, um, I think and it was a hand reg, or I, or I picked it up on the drop. Um, I don't even have a price on it, so that's how long I've had. Because um, I just, I didn't, I wasn't tracking back then because I was hand regging it. Um, so, no, this is, this is kind of like, Going right for these kinds of names. From now, you the, said it was grand. from the you registered in be, the before time. This would be like two yeah. <laughs> So if it was like assaultattorney.com, that would be more like 50 grand. Maybe, okay. maybe, or 35 grand. But if it was, I don't know, divorce attorney or DY attorney, then it's like a hundred grand. Yep. No, that's good. And that's great perspective because again, when it comes to legal names, like nobody's got a portfolio like I mean, that's your world and your jam. And uh so that's good insight. Um, so keep that in mind, folks. All right. So we got a one, one, uh, drew you, it's up to you, but since it's Adam and, and Braden, this will be the tiebreaker between them. So if you kick a name that I may know about, then I'll just, I'll defer just cause this way we get a winner right now. But what do you got? You got a buy or a sell Adam and Braden. You want, for, for the you want first. to buy or you want to sell what you guys want. This is coming Damn. down to the two of you. I think I think sales are better for the audience, honestly. All right. Okay. Let them sure. know. All right. Uh, you want a one word or a three letter? <laughs> what you want? What you want? <sighs> so over here, I'm just gonna be over here throwing the money up. What's up? Um, let's do a, let's do a one word. <laughs> one word sale. One word. He's just right. showing off now. He's like, I got so many sales. I don't even know where to start. Oh, <laughs> do we know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 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 quilt.com. Oh, nice. Oh, you went. Nice. Quilt.com. Solid. All right. We are going to close out the first domain game of 2023 with quilt.com. Andrew puts quilt.com on the table as a sale. To play cue the Jeopardy music. Billy, Braden, and Adam. Final. Final Jeopardy. Final domain game. Let's go. We're in overtime. Oh, 
JT, name. do you? I don't even know if you, you know what it's all for. I do, but I'm just, you know. But either way, even if I didn't, I think it's like because okay. the two of them each have a point. It's good to yeah. let them like that way. I don't get it, and then clutter. Is this your, is this your, uh, your sale, Drew? Your your personal name? Um, is this something you brokered? Who well, made the decision on whether it's sold or not? Drew was involved in uh, that decision. I right? made the decision. I made the decision on whether it's sold or not. Okay. All right, oh, I'm, gonna like he's I'm gonna change. I'm that changing was, now. See, that's well, what hurt really me on the last one too. That is, one, Drew. You, you know, Braden, that. Braden was like, "Drew, it was a sale on sexualassaultattorney.com." That's also why I pumped my number up because you're like, "Drew, it was a sale." Like you gave him like like a head nod and like a whole thing. I'm like, "Oh, that, that's code." He says he sold it big. All right, here we go. Ready? All right, flip <laughs> He's it. Doing it. Oh, we got a big spread for the folks who only listen. What? Well, hold up. One twenty-five. This was a sale, Braden. Braden <laughs> says one twenty-five. <laughs> Adam says five hundred and fifty thousand. The domain is quilt.com. Five hundred thousand dollars. Five hundred thousand dollars. Adam Strong with the big win. Five hundred four. It's actually five hundred two. Nice. Five hundred four. Yeah. No, I, I definitely came in low because I was trying to get the under. Yeah, <laughs> well, you went way under. But, but, but uh, um, that was way under. That's, had, that's amazing. I had, four, I had 425 first, and then I said, who sold it? And then, oh, and then I gave it, it up to get, it, it, even it more, to get it even more in the paint. Adam Strong with the big yes. win, kicking off 2023 <laughs> on the domain game with Great. the first win. So, all right, well, I can send you some stuff then. Yeah. You know what? It's funny. That name. Too cheap. I learned a lot on that name. So we bought that name. About four or five years ago, um, uh, on behalf of a client, and we got, and it was like I think we bought it for one hundred or one twenty five, and so we were like, "Yo, you are literally stealing this! Like, you are getting the deal of a lifetime!" Like, we reached out to the owner. Owner quoted us a price. We went back. We were like, yo, this is the price. They're like, all right, great. Let's do it. And I'm like, I'm going to just pull the trigger so this dude doesn't change his mind. And so I actually was proactive and I just went out and bought the name, put it in escrow because they, I forget, I, it was five or six years. They, they needed like whatever, go through processes, get 13 approvals and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yo, look, you guys don't understand. This is like an absolute steal. Just do the deal. And they're like, all right, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I was like, look, we're going to lose this thing. So I just executed. I just bought the domain. I didn't try to mark it up or anything. It was like, look, I just I bought it so that we don't lose this deal. And then I got stiff-armed by the buyer. And the buyer was like, you know, we changed our mind. We're going a different direction. And it was like, what? And so I felt a certain way about it at first. I was like, oh, man, I, I just bought this name for you. And then I was like, you know what? I don't really care. You know. Now, to be fair... This is five, six years ago when it was not your every day that people were paying $100,000 to buy a one word.com. Yeah, you paid um, up for it back then. At then, I was paying three times what I would have normally probably paid. Yeah. Um, so I was sweating it a little bit. Um, uh, and it was actually Chris's client. I wasn't even dealing with the client. Chris was. And so then Chris was sweating because we got stuck with this name. Uh, so Chris has actually been like trying to sell this name and we've had this basically at the one yard line or even like an agreed upon deal, like three, maybe even four times over the last years. And every time the deal would fall apart for some weird reason. And there's like five major companies with tens of millions of dollars in funding that are called quilt. Uh, but it just never, it just always sort of fell apart at the finish line. But anyway, so this one landed and uh, that was the price. So I agree. And, I think it is worth more maybe, but you know, it was a good price. And, and for, uh, for those that, that don't know, I mean, Quill obviously can be used as just a brandable name, but uh, like I have embroid.com, which is kind of similar, mm -hmm. mark, but you know, it's just going to be a brand, but quilting is huge, huge, huge online. I mean, we're talking about, I, you know, and I people. actually, I didn't actually know this at the time. I wish I had, because I would have actually rebuilt the site and then done something with it. I didn't know this until later, but I got contacted by somebody from the industry a couple of two years, maybe after I bought it. And they were like, you know, that quilt.com was actually like, literally it was the industry website. It was like, you know, 
the little old lady who started the blog when the internet emerged and this thing just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew organically. And it was like, you know, domain authority 78 or something. It was like mega, mega, mega big website for quilting. Uh, Did you say that it was stitched together over time? <laughs> no, no, he would not, not say that. I would, you would never hear me say that, actually. <laughs> 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 all right well look i think you know all good adam wins i got some i got i actually have some swag here actually i got some i got some some i got, I got ape in swag i got some zoo swag i got some stuff so i'm gonna have to see i'm gonna see what i'm gonna send you man i'm gonna get that i'll uh i might even still owe you some from last like 2000 from last year 2022 probably, probably. So we're gonna get I'm gonna hook you up because I know we can get cold up there. You know what I mean? So hoodie hoodies are <laughs> on the way. Media Options is the industry's leading domain broker specializing in domain acquisitions, high value domain sales, and domain name consultation. As pioneers and thought leaders on the subject of the domain aftermarket and domain name value, plus through their clear domain acquisition service, Media Options offers startups and established corporations an unparalleled scope of high value domain options, providing access to domain names and curation technologies not available elsewhere. Media Options believes in the power of a great domain name and is dedicated to helping you obtain yours. Call or email today to put a domain to work for you. Let's slide right into the name Jack in the Jet segment. So congratulations to Adam. Way to way way to handle your biz, especially in that or that at overtime, that big win. Um, but now we're going to slide in name jet and the jet sponsored by our friends at name jet. Check out the list. Uh, we have the spreadsheet on the site. Go to domain sherpa.com, grab it. It's got the appraisal, the Estabot appraisal. Please take that with a grain of salt. But at the same time, access to some additional data. How many back orders as of the day we do the show? How many days left in the back order period as of the day the show airs? These are all expiring domains, which means that in order to participate in the auction, you will need to have a back order in before the end of the back order period. Um, and a few of these, uh, I believe the end of the back order period is a couple of days after the show airs. So please go ahead and grab that. Check it out. Hopefully it helps. Um, and uh, yeah, so we got a list and... Uh, we can dive right into it if you guys all have it in front of you. Anybody need the list? Anybody not have it? This was curated, put together. You talk about curation. What's up, Brand Bucket? What's up, Squad Help? You know, what's up? Uh, <laughs> so, Drew, what do you like? What don't you like? Let's talk about it. Let's get some feedback. All right. Uh, I have relative indifference dot com to this list. Oh, okay. Uh, I like it. That's a good use of a word that's on the list. Uh, <laughs> that's that's very thought provoking. Also sure. good. Also <laughs> good. Yeah, let's go. Uh, it's an extreme way, view. <laughs> yes, it's an extreme view. Um, do I have a, oh yeah, there you uh, go. Ooh, okay, yeah, that's why that one is. Uh, I don't know. Right. I I I don't really love anything on here. Uh, I mean, I like extreme.com just because it looks like it's got some traffic and, you know, I like X as a prefix and a suffix. Um, although I like it better as a suffix, but it's got some search. It's got some traffic. You definitely want to do some trademark research. Make sure you're not, you know, it sounds like the kind of of Wi-Fi internet I need, right? That's what I'm saying, yeah, extreme. man. That's, that's this, it, man. This extreme. list has like three or four names that could be, you know, your Wi-Fi. Yo. You know, I mean, literally, Wi-Fi booster is on the list, guys. Come on, man. It tie. It all yeah, comes together. That name, that name is worthless. It all. It's not that it's worthless. <laughs> it's just that it's worth less. Man, we are hitting all our marks today. I love it. The producer. Which one is Wi-Fi booster? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You, are you bidding on it? Is that why you said that? No. Come on. You. <laughs> what you think that actually has value? It does. No, it oh, does. All right, yeah. good. I like it. I like it. it. Spicy. Sure Let's go. It ah. you, look, it is. It is. How, how many people? We were just talking about this at, at the top of the show. Actually, before we start recording, you know, you you have Wi-Fi boosters and beacons throughout your house, right? Yeah. And, and so, I mean, it's generic. Yeah. It's okay. Generic. But hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I hear what you're saying. Okay. I'm the first one to say. I, I talked about it. Ad infinitum. Infinitum. I don't even know what the expression is. Infinitum. Um, uh, about <laughs> like ca- how I love the domain cabinets.com because cabinets are a high value item, which there, it, there's no household brand, right? There's no, 
If I say, you know, what's the brand of kitchen cabinets you've got? You'd be like, fuck if I know. Right. So um it's a weird brand. That requires <laughs> that requires you to go do internet <laughs> research. And then there's an opportunity for SEO and you know, mm-hmm. e-commerce. In the case of Wi-Fi splitter or whatever the domain is, booster, it's like think about how I have them in my house, but they came because I hired a, like a local guy that came and he did his reseller bullshit, right? I didn't even have a choice. It was like, here's what we use. That's what you're going to use now, right? And it was the same for you. Like, and if for those things, for for like electronics, that's why I've always said like, like GoDaddy owns laptops.com. I think laptops.com is like basically worthless because like it's one of those names that's just a hot potato that like it's good from an investor standpoint. It's like, oh, one word.com, big value item, blah, 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 laptops.com. Estebot looks real sexy on that bitch. And then, <laughs> you know, you buy that thing and then it's like, oh, shit. You know, it's like turn the lights on, figure out what you really got. And it's like, you got to die, you know, and like. Nobody buys laptops on laptops.com and they never will because they already know they're either a Mac guy, a Dell guy, or, uh, you know, I go to Best Buy and buy my computer guy, right? And so, or gal. Right? And so it's like, that's it. Right? Like Nobody's buying like laptops on laptops.com. Ain't going to happen. And nobody's buying their Wi Fi boosters on Wi Fi booster.com. They're going to Best Buy or Amazon. Like, I just don't, I don't know. Yeah, and it's interesting. I mean, I agree to it. I, I mean, I agree largely, but I do think that Wi-Fi booster is something you might Google. You know, if you're like, you get I, fed up with the like, fact I that your Wi-Fi e-bikes. sucks I sold your e-bikes.org. I sold ebike.org and ebikes.org for 50 grand. And I think that guy actually got a great deal because ebikes are not, there's no household brand yet. It is high value. People do want to do their research and compare them. And there's like, you could be proprietary, you could have an affiliate deal, blah, blah, blah. but there's a huge opportunity to do the SEO and do e-commerce. I just don't see that on Wi-Fi boosters. Wait, 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 wait. Ebike.com sold to Bosch for a million dollars. Dot org. I know, but the dot com yo, sold for a million dollars. I've got, yo, go go to Qtips.com and buy some and clean your ears, dog. Look. <laughs> wait, but we're talking about dot com. <laughs> Why did you switch to dot, dot org? I wasn't talking about .com. I said I sold ebike and ebikes.org. That was those are valuable names because it's in a category which lends itself to e-commerce and you know. I, but I just I got I got, I got I got one I got one BMX bikes right same vein that Drew's talking about BMXbikes.com. How much is it worth? I've sold this name and had to re re um, whatever reclaim, reclaim it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For because. Forklifts, so, yeah. So, so, so what do y'all think? BMX bikes. I, I mean, I'd have to look at, you know, what the search is because it's really, you know, it's worth it's a niche, what right? the search yeah. market is, right? Um, but I'll tell you. Hold up, give me a second. Why don't you just tell us? Uh, BMX bikes. Hold up. Hold up. Well, I could tell Hold you what up. I sold it for. I got no problem. Hey. I sold it for- 77,000 exact match search in the US, 147,000 global, 35 cents CPC, 35 to 55,000. Yeah, I sold it for 25. Yeah. The guy could, could, couldn't make a go of it. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I mean, that, that ties just into what- on the proprietor, too. I mean, there's. People yeah. That yeah, can yeah. Make it- but, but, but look, like, how many people have a Wi-Fi booster? Everybody's got Wi-Fi in their house. And mm-hmm. a lot of people have boosters, right? So if they, they need Wi-Fi coverage in their backyard or if they what have a big it house, like, they need boosters. What it, the cheap boosters cost 20 bucks. The expensive ones cost 75 You know, you can buy them on every... This is a, I'm not I saying a guy for guy guess at the bottom of my street will sell you 15 of them for five bucks a pop. You know what I mean? Like, Look, I'm not saying this is a $50,000 name, but it's a Five thousand, ten thousand dollar name, right? I, yeah, because I you think, can build out a no. site with affiliate links. People are searching. There's forty four hundred searches a month, right? The CPC is dollar seventy three. People buy Wi Fi boosters. Three thousand searches a month. 
I actually, to- I kind of lean towards Braden where I think Wi-Fi booster is something that people don't just know. You know, this isn't like, oh, I use, uh, there's a certain brand that you have to use. So you're going to go do that. I agree that it's like, all right, maybe my web guy, you know, my installer of my, you know, might tell me, hey, this is the one that we use for Comcast. You know, maybe I go to Best Buy and I buy one off the shelf. But I think I'd be more likely to Google Wi-Fi booster than I would be to Google e-bike because I'm more likely to need Wi-Fi boosting. And it's something that I'll buy online relatively quickly. But I need to get to some sort of way to figure out which one I want. You know, look, and the average person has got a a router slash modem that was installed by the carrier. And then they're in their driveway or in their backyard or they're in the far bedroom, whatever. And, you know, the signal isn't strong enough. And they don't have like wi-fi in every installed in every room some of us do not everybody does a lot a lot of the stuff is is diy and i think people will search wi-fi booster not knowing what brand not knowing where to start and then they'll buy something whether oh, it's an apple or a euro or whatever buy something know. Listen, call it, you know in their bedroom page one is best buy amazon cnet pc mag youtube waveform whoever that is and new york times like I could see, I could see zero percent chance you're competing on that. I could see it working as like some sort of like, uh, like um, you know, TV commercial type of thing. Get your Wi-Fi booster at Wi-Fi booster. Yeah, okay. Just enter yeah, the code, fine. whatever you know. Like yeah, it, it could be QVC. Some kind of, but, yeah, except QVC. Yeah, but they could just they commercial. could just as easily they could just as easily use Xtreme or <laughs> like whatever. I just, actually, I was just gonna say, what do you think is a better name for a Wi-Fi boosting company with and and tool and and uh, uh, gadget? Wi-Fi booster.com or extreme.com extreme all day. I'm taking extreme all day. You know what? It didn't even actually occur to me that extreme is kind of a play on words for extreme too. Didn't play. Oh, didn't yeah, even yeah. occur to me till right now. I'll buy you, huh? <laughs> 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 oh man. Yeah. I mean, people people should know. pay to watch this show. People I think that's, a pay great, to watch this show. that's a great name. I mean, you get the play on extreme and then it's like X stream. So you can stream whatever. Like, I think that's like an, an awesome name for like a, 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 you know, like a, not a YouTube channel. Cause it, you just go to YouTube, but like, you know, uh, some kind of uh, streaming channel. For All right, so the only stuff. name I, I guess you could also, I mean, I guess it'd be good for like porn too, probably, you know, Got to go there. I mean, but I, I'm sorry. I'm just saying. You know, it's like it's probably it's extreme. Hey, Drew, what other names you like? <laughs> um, a, I do. I actually do like the I love pizza because it's like you, you know throw that thing on. It's like there's actually a bottle. It's like a couple thousand people a month searching for I love pizza. But you know, that's like an I love New York thing. You can make T-shirts. You can do something. I love pizza. Pizza is the number one most loved food on the planet. You know what I mean? Yeah, basically, it's like if your market is pizza lovers it's like my market is the whole world yes i do love some, love some pizza but um who doesn't like pizza right? all right it's adam like, what about you you got what names do you like don't like, like if you if you like if you're like gluten intolerant it's like you know what's the worst part about being gluten intolerant it's like oh pizza yeah do you ever eat gluten-free crust i don't like it but no. yeah exactly you That's go to exactly any pizza, you know, these big pizza chains in the U.S. that have like each one has like hundreds of stores. They all have food. Yeah. And pizza. Oh yeah, and they got cauliflower crust now and everything too. And there's a whole lot of different options that are you know. And actually, cauliflower crust <laughs> crust isn't so bad. But um, Adam, what do you got, man? What do you like or don't like? Not vegan I, though. I don't know. I'm with Drew. I think I think pet clothing, muscle drink, uh, vacation condo, and Wi-Fi booster are all in the same category. They're just. Eh. Oh, um, okay. I, know, I would I not touch muscle drink. I would not touch that. You're you're gonna get UERP in a second. Why is really? muscle? Is that yeah? Muscle milk has been around. Is, oh is, yeah. What do you drink? Been around. I mean, most people heard of it because it's been around for like I don't know. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. how I get all my gains. You know, what I'm so saying? it's probably dog. you know more than thirty years old. I would. Ah, but come on, you I, can't. No, 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 hold up, hold up, hold. Up. Very, 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 very specifically to exactly the example you just gave is precisely why this has a 0% chance of being lost in a UDRP because there is literally like one of the words which has the most case law around it in all of intellectual property is the word milk. It's like a bazillion cases around the word milk because of oat milk and almond milk and all these companies who try to say, oh, I'm selling milk. And then the milk industry saying, you ain't got milk. And <laughs> you got uh, milk, bitch. <laughs> you know, you got, and basically, 
where the case law has arrived at, roughly speaking, I'm not a lawyer and I don't play one on the internet, but my lame you know, interpretation of where know. case law has arrived at is um, that they can use the word drink and they cannot use the word milk. And so there is a very clear distinction specifically between the word milk and drink in case law. And so I maybe a UDRP could be one, maybe on a weak registrar, but it would never win in a court. And I actually would unless agree you with did you. something blatant like I'm gonna literally set up an affiliate website to sell muscle milk on musclebrink.com. Yeah, yeah, or you, you, or you go to musclebrink.com and you're selling muscle milk with like two L's, you know what I mean? But I, I think I think um, that you could literally no, I think you could actually have a protein or you know, whatever workout drink that you call muscle drink, or you just market on muscle drink, but call it, you know, big booty, you know, protein shake. Um <laughs> That would not, which, which is, con- great, I don't think you would have a conflict, a conflict. I think you'd be <laughs> big booty. I literally think you, 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 you'd win. <laughs> yes, correct. Yeah. This is not financial advice, not legal advice. We actually give zero advice. I already advice made that income. disclaimer. But I already made that disclaimer. <laughs> Yo, he's like, I made that make disclaimer. Sure. Bitch. Sure. Um, look, man, it's all good. You could just say what you wanted to say there. You didn't have to, you didn't have to hold back. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, no, but um, I, I really muscle drink and muscle milk. I oh, think, no, I agree with you. I agree. I, I'd I have actually, to dig in I a little bit specifically, but just to fuck around and find out. I kind of want. I think it's a. I actually I like muscle kick drink. I want to this out to a to an eight on the fuck around chart. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like musclebrink.com as a name because I think you could create a cool like kind of. I don't know. You're starting to see like you know the wine that comes in like a juice box and just like red wine brand red wine you know what i mean like muscle drink like i think you could actually have a or even like you know soylent and you know they have different stuff that's super simple and basic and that's some of the appeal of it. And uh, I think that I'd have to look and see if there's somebody who's, who's actually trademarked the words muscle drink, but I kind of like that. So, yeah. So revising my previous statement, assuming there is no exact trademark for muscle drink, I don't think that the trademark for muscle milk is conflicting. I think it actually is supportive to your argument on muscle drink.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, as long as you don't do something flagrant. I think those are well, good disclaimers. I, I, my, I my, not... my point is that it wasn't a good name to be hit with. <laughs> right, but in, oh, would you say that the milk is the juice is not worth the squeeze? The milk is not oh, worth right, the yes. the milk is not worth what do you is that the squeeze? I guess also the time that we spent on it was not worth it. The milk <laughs> is not worth the milk is not worth the uttering. Yeah, well, you know, back. JT, I I think this is one of your weaker lists. You know, it's been a long time. You've been really strong with it's, your lists. Uh, this, this isn't is, bad. This, this isn't bad. Eh, eh. Let Braden go. This is maybe the first time there's not a name on here that I'm gonna like go. Oh, you know, I'm gonna go back for. I'm gonna back order this name. There's nothing on here. I'm actually gonna back order for sixty nine. Okay, bucks, so you can... so I I'm going. yeah, but you're not gonna win any of the ones that you would back order for sixty nine bucks. You're not gonna win it for sixty nine bucks. So why bother? Sure. Yeah, true. So, can I go? Please. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see how long I last before I get interrupted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I wouldn't touch muscle drink because what is it going to be used for other than like a protein shake kind of thing? Um, and then you're going to get UDRP by that company. My opinion, uh, for what it's worth. Um, Wi Fi booster, I think, is decent. Not great, but decent. By the way, he is a lawyer and plays one on the internet. It was about 30 seconds, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> I had the under. I, 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 that was pretty good, actually. Um, uh, what do I like here? Um, design a website. Man. Game party, I think, is decent because uh, there's a lot. You know, people like to um, have a host board game parties and they search for ideas of what to do. And then also, like, um, you can hire companies to come out and, and do, like, these treasure hunt games and stuff like that. And, um, and those, that's big bucks. I mean, I actually went to one. Really? Yeah. And a buddy of mine, he spent, um, a couple hundred thousand dollars with a company. Really? That, yeah. That set up this whole, uh, this whole thing. That's um, how they do it out in Calabasas. That's how they do it in Malibu anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, so, like- so there's, there's value in that because it could be high end game parties. Um, but then there's also like, you know, board games and stuff like that. So I think that's, that's decent. Um, indifference, uh, I don't I don't love it. I don't know what you can do with it. Indifferent is better, but 
even that one's not so great. Miller is, you know, probably last name. I don't know how many, but anything that's a last name has got some value. Um, that's also a first name, Millard Fillmore. Uh, it's also the name of a prestigious uh, Adam, prep, prep school in Nebraska. Moving on. Um, um, <laughs> Adam, you said you did not like pet clothing, but again, just like Wi-Fi booster, pet clothing is a thing. Pet costumes more so. But but people dress up their little foof dogs. I don't know why. They put them in strollers and wander them around the neighborhood. I don't know why they do that, but uh, they're buying stuff for their dogs. It's a huge, you know, it's like a 73 billion dollar a year industry or something like that it's you in know, the same category stuff. i'm just saying I, I didn't say i didn't like it i'm just saying it's in the same category as those others that we talked about yeah i think sell my house is probably the best one on the list for, for a broker again not high you value. know what that name that name is like a town bike everybody's taking it for a ride that name is worthless <laughs> and the reason is that worthless did you worthless say, or yeah, worth worthless. less? It's <laughs> worthless. No, it's worthless. Think, think, think about it, right? Sell my house. At first, you're like, ooh, sell my house. What a nice little phrase. But you as the homeowner aren't going to create a website that's like, my house is for sale. No, you must broker. Come sell it. No, no, right. no. A broker. But, a broker. Yeah, but if you're a broker, it's going to be broker. sell your house. It's a call to action. So it's sell your house, not sell my house. And, and if you were going to use it, broker, and if you were going to use it to sell your own home, like you, you would want buy my house. Domain dot com. Like I'm going to set up a brokerage is called sell my domain dot com. It's like no, what are you talking about? That's like that's stupid. We'd I say sell it, your domains. Look, I don't sell your it, domain. From a branding perspective, it's not great, but I'm willing to bet that some broker out there, he would pay two grand for that or something. Yeah, I've, I've, listen. All of these names, there is somebody stupid enough to pay something for them. <laughs> I, I think it's a different way to frame it. I think you'd say all these names have value at a certain price. It's just yeah. that, you know, there's a threshold. And then that's this whole, it's not that the name's worthless. It's just that it's worth less. Yeah. Worth less than other people probably think that it's worth. Uh, let, let me be clear. I'm not. It's the, inverse, the it's the inverse of the fuck around and find out know. curve, right? So the further <laughs> out you go on the fuck around, the more you're going to find out. Whereas the, the the lower the IQ of the buyer, the higher the price you're going to get. I don't, I like the fuck around curve, but I don't think it's applicable in this curve. <laughs> <laughs> There's a value curve, I think, uh, maybe. But, oh, I think that was the meme but, of 2022. I love but, it. That was the, like, I think that's my favorite meme of all time. But bottom line yeah. is, um, I'm not bidding on a single name on this list. All right. Well, I think that fine. You hate the list. It's okay. They're not my names. I do feel some kind of attachment because I did put the list together. I think the game party is underrated. I think there's value there. I think to Braden's point, you have high end type stuff. You also have like, you know, my kids have gone to these parties where they rent the video game truck and, you know, or they're renting bouncy houses or what, well, whatever. Even at um, even at New Year's Eve when we're hanging out at a friend's house, they broke out one of these murder mystery board game type things. They've got escape room games, and you know, there's all this different stuff. People are looking for reasons, especially post COVID, to get together Listen, and spend time in they, person together. They, whatever the number was, Estebot was like, "Oh, GameParty.com. This thing is like, you know, a Rolls Royce." Listen, here's the real data, not the bullshit data. I don't know where the hell they got it from. Okay, data. The real data is there are 40 people, four zero, in the world that search for game party. 40. There are 40 people in the world. Now, there are 24,000 people per month that search for house party game. There are 4,000 people per month that search for party game. There are literally... 40 people in the world per month that search for game party 40 hey since you got so, that up hey since you got that up look up couch party for me really quickly <laughs> seriously okay. and while, more than while, this. while he's doing that i just want to point out that there are, are it literally four times more people per month four times more people per month that search for couch party than game party so y'all can have your game party. Wait though, but that, it's that's worthless. because it's become that's because it's become a brand or a, a colloquialism. But it, it doesn't take party? much. I never heard of couch party. 
Yeah, couch party is like a new thing. I mean, JT, I don't know, maybe Braden, one of you guys has heard of it. Like, it's like, uh, or no, it's couch party is one, and then there's watch party too. Watch party is another version of couch party. Basically, you're on a couch and you're doing things together through the internet. I've got a- couchsurfer.com, and there's a pretty big website called like couchsurfing.com. Uh-huh. And, um, They've tried to get it a few times. They tried to sue me once. Shut their ass down. <laughs> so there's a video game that's been, it looks like three or four versions of it on Nintendo called Game Party. So some of those searches might be related to that specific video game. Yeah. In the 90s, there are mm-hmm. literally. No, not, recent- it's not new, it's, but it's, it's, I mean, it's in, it was in the odds, like 2007, 2008. I'm going to get, I'm going to bid on Game Party. All I know I'm is gonna, when I, I'm when I sell go to game party, the, the, I sell it for five figures, mid five top figures. Ad I'm seeing is for game trucks. You know what I mean? And uh, and then I see that game thing about com right here. And then I see the I, Nintendo I stuff need. kick in, and then I see, hey, top party games for adults. You know, uh, you know, the Game Spot. You know, some other stuff like best entertaining party <laughs> games, 2020, whatever. Like, you know, I don't know, man. I, I I'm with you that look, and I think this is an important sort of note it's like sometimes names on their face sound good but obviously digging into the data is important um so i feel you i think this i i I, i'm not arguing with you drew but i just guess again it comes down to what you're going to win the name for a name jet i wouldn't pay ten thousand dollars for the name but if i could get game party for a couple hundred bucks i would buy it would you buy it what would you what would you you wouldn't buy game party for five hundred dollars gameparty.com yeah no not looking at that at that i would hundred percent Braden? I'd buy it for like 200 Yeah, it's worth a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. So, and I think that's part of the challenge. And that's some of the issue you run into with some of the stuff with the nest about appraisal that says the name's worth like a hundred grand. Like, obviously, no. if you're couching yourself in your expert or your argument around that value, it, then of course, it, nobody it, in their right mind is going to pay hundred grand. It actually just occurred to me. I actually know what the flaw is with us about on this particular name. They have a flaw where when you reverse those two names, when you reverse yeah. the two keywords, for whatever reason, their party algorithm games. treats it the same. Yeah. So it's instead of game party, it's party game. I was just about to say literally that. showing you the search for party game. Yeah. Right. And I wouldn't value those How names. How stupid anyone. is that? Because that, that flaw has been with Estabot for I'm as sure. long as I've used it. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously, look, they're not the two names are not the same. So, you know, party game, you'd pay a lot, lot more. And then you would for game party. It doesn't mean game party is worthless. It's just worth less than party game. Boom. That's it. Boom. I mean, it's Moving like, on. so, um, all right, what else? We got any other names? Anything else before we go? We got about maybe three minutes left. And then I know everybody's uh, going to turn into some pumpkins here. You know, they got things to do here in 2023, the Jordan year. I got something to do. Let's go. All right. Well, I mean, you guys got any more names you want to talk about on the list? Or are we done with the name Jack and a Jet list? Nah, this list is worthless, dude. <laughs> it's not worthless. It's <laughs> worthless. Come on, man. All right. Hey, thank you um, for that, guys. Appreciate your insight. There was there was a lot of interesting things, uh, you know, thought about whatever um, and talked about. All right. So we're in the last segment. Anything we want to talk about? We got a couple things coming up. We've got the ICA meeting happening in Las Vegas in a couple weeks. And so if you have not done that or signed up for that, it's the the week. Uh, yeah, fall, the I 20. do have to disclose because I did tell everybody I was probably going to come. I can no longer come uh, for family reasons. So I, gotta so I will the, not be there, unfortunately. I got to cancel the massage. <laughs> the couple's <laughs> massage that you and Drew are going to do. Yes. Today? You're like, oh, gosh, darn it. Right. Um, but yeah, but it's still look. You know, it still looks like there's going to be a, a bunch of people there. It looks like it's yeah, be a good time. I, I'm actually really sad. I think it is going to be really good. There's going to be a bunch of people there, and I think it is going to be really good. And I actually really wish I could go, but I can't. Yeah, I, good, I was actually I was totally booked, man. I was all booked up. I had tickets. I had a hotel room. But what anybody hotel? that anybody that wants to come, uh, they just need to sign up for the ICA. Um, actually, I think it's sold out, isn't it? Um. I don't, I don't know, but technically know. yes. But I think if you sign up now for the ICA, you could probably, I think they'd squeeze you in. Probably, yeah. Uh, hotel did. sold out. I mean, you know, look, it's, it's, you're getting tight. You're getting tight on time. You know, it's the weekend is a week of the 22nd of January. So it's, it's coming. Uh, the point is you have, you have a few weeks to sign up for the ICA and still come. 
Yep. And then if you are trying to connect with people in real life, it's going to be a good time. And, uh, you know, in Vegas, which is always a good time. It really, it's really right in that slot of when NamesCon used to be when NamesCon was in Vegas. So it, uh, you know, kind of really sort of scratches that itch, if you will. Um, speaking of NamesCon, the next, the next thing after the ICA meeting, setting aside anything like ICANN meetings and stuff like that would be NamesCon, which is going to take place, I think, in that, like right after Memorial Day. Um, late May in Austin, Texas. Am I right? Is it? Uh, it's not Memorial. And that I am definitely planning to attend. Which um, is going to be big because it's going to be combined with Cloudfest, which is a giant. Yeah, show. yeah. And it's going to be at the Bigger same place. Bigger is not always better. It's not. It's not as bad. I mean, it's not. You know, for us, I don't, I'm not going to. I'm not going to love that. But it's going to bring new people. Yeah. And, but look, yeah. for those yeah. for those for those investors that are trying to meet up with kind of the old school like every every name's come you know, there's people that come up to me and they're like hey can i get you know five or ten minutes just want to you know chew on here oh, yeah. and, and ask you some questions and get some <laughs> advice I, you know, I think anybody that's a, that have, have been in the industry for a long time gets that the ic event in vegas is the perfect place for that because we're not so busy running around getting on stage and t- meetings and we don't have that it, we're just we're just there to hang out um, there's a bunch of activities, so we're breaking off into activities where it's going to be like 15 people. It's a great place to come talk to us. So that's my pitch for coming to the IC event. Yeah, no, I think, look, both events are going to be great. I think if you can get to both, awesome. I think, um, you know, like you said, the ICA is going to be more of an intimate kind of thing. If there are people you want to connect with, I think especially for people who are relatively new to the space, you know, A, supporting the ICA is a fantastic thing. But getting access to people like Braden and others that are there that, you know, you can have real conversations with real people who can really help you um, and who are willing to help and, and all of that, I think, is you know, is, is a no brainer. Um, and again, Vegas is, you know, always a good time. Um, and then, yeah, the NamesCon Global is going to be taking place right after Memorial Day, uh, starting May 31st uh, into June 3rd, 2023. I think the combination with CloudFest, you know, uh, bigger is not always better. We saw that with some some you know, conferences in the past, but this is a natural fit and a natural combination. Plus it's the same group that runs it. And I think it does create an opportunity, even from a partnership standpoint, from a business development standpoint, where you really do, uh, you know, can kind of outreach a bit and, you know, sort of expand the network. I think that's a, that's a positive. So I think that's going to be great. I think the Austin location, they've done a great job setting it up there. I think it's really well suited for this and for an event of this size. So, um, you know, I would recommend that as well. So, yeah, you guys got anything else you want to talk about? Um, I, so I was just um, elected to the, the board, the ICA board. So I just want to thank oh. the, the current board. Big up! Congratulations, all, man! Let's all go. The members so. that, that uh, voted for me, it was almost unanimous. Um, mm-hmm. There are a couple of people said no. Uh, I, I voted already. against you. He voted for. He's like I'm I voted joking. for. He's like, I voted for a bag of sand. I actually, to be fair, I actually didn't even vote, but I think JT voted for, in my place. Yeah, of course I voted for you. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying Drew's like I've I've just, I abstained in in protest. Some people didn't, and I was like, who who are these? What did I do? Well, if not. <laughs> wow. Congratulations, man. I think it's, uh, you know, it's funny if you go back and check the tape from like one, maybe even the, one of the first episodes that I did to make Sherpa and you know, where I get, you know, first time everybody's on, you get a little bit of a bigger bio. And the thing I said, you know, is that the amount of time that you donate to the space and to people in the space, I think is really awesome, you know, and it's, um, you know, and, and and a lot of the folks that are on this show do that, but you do it as much as anybody. And, uh, you know, and it comes from a place of genuinely just wanting to help and wanting to, like, kind of further the whole, you know, the the, the movement, the purpose of all of it and, uh, you know, expanding the tent and all that. And I think that's really cool. So, you know, good on the yeah, ICA. I, I, you know, know. That's the thing. I don't have anything to sell. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that have an ulterior motive. And I, I don't. I don't. There's nothing I'm selling to domainers here. I mean, I have, mm-hmm. you know, interest in various domain related businesses, but I'm not out there pitching stuff and I don't have anything to sell you guys. I'm just, um, I'm just trying to help. I, you know, I want to, I, I always said I want to pay it forward because when I got into this industry many years ago, um, everybody kind of welcomed me with open arms and were, were, were very helpful and gave me advice and supportive. And, and I want to keep the industry that way. Um, it was, it was really nice to come because I've been in other industries where you show up and you, you don't know anybody and no one's there to help you and they don't give a shit. And this industry is not like that. 
Um, so I'm paying it forward. And, and I would ask to all of you out there, if you've gotten help from others um, when you got started, then you know, pay that forward and, and help other people want to get into this space. Awesome. So what about that? if you were getting kicked on the way up? <laughs> <laughs> that's why drew drew is like the mule of the industry you know what i'm saying he just he got kicked on the way up so he's gonna kick on the way down and he's gonna you know what i'm saying so you best believe you best believe that's what's happening get ready to get mule kicked um but for everybody else you know <laughs> no but i think getting yeah, bought wing oh. chirping is on almost every show so there's that. <laughs> It is all good. So, all right. all right, good stuff. What about you, Adam? Anything else on your end, man? I got a shout out. I got a Ooh. shout out to my to Michael Strong, my dad. He is oh. now watching Sherpas for some reason. Oh, <laughs> so, let's go! That's awesome. Yeah, he's gonna enjoy. He's yeah, gonna enjoy this one. So I was uh, like, dude, why are you watching those? <laughs> I was like, you're not gonna get anything out of it. But I think he's, he's trying to figure. My- He's yeah. still trying to figure out, you know, I'm, I turned 50, you know, last month and, and, uh, and my dad's still trying to figure out what I do for a living. I think, yeah. So. <laughs> yes. I love that. It's uh, my father-in-law believes that I, I make up names on the, he's like, Oh, I got some good names for you to make up on the internet. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, that yeah, my, my dad calls me a pirate. So like, he thinks that I, uh, I try to, you know, I don't know. He just calls me an internet pirate. So I love it. Yeah. We are. Do- yeah. We've been to, we've been called domain pirates oh, before. And uh, you know what? I think at some point you lean into that shit like Jack Sparrow, you know, yeah. and uh, well, shout out to your dad. Yo, shout out to, to the, the new, elder strong. Yeah, one let's new, go. One new viewer. You know, we've also started picking up some of uh, one of my buddies. I told you I added value, JT. Come no, on. I love it, man. I love it. And big shout out to the Elder Strong for uh, for watching, man. Really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, bo- both of my parents watch too. And I'm always like, why? Why do you watch? <laughs> but they, they, they love it. I don't know why they love it. Because they love seeing their kids like doing stuff and no, having they fun watch it and even being when themselves. I'm not on. Oh, that's even better. Well, hey. shout out to the shout out to the Elder Rosners as well. Then what's up, guys? So they're getting a big heavy dose of me. So I, I apologize in advance. But, um, you know, I do put up with your son and I do my best to keep him out of trouble. So, you know, that's our that's our deal. You know, so, so thanks for tuning in. But, uh, you know, I've got a couple of my friends who watch and then now they're some of their kids have started to watch. who are like my kids, friends and their ages. And so these kids are like 13, 14 and they, they get the biggest kick out of Drew, though. They like when Drew goes off on his rants, like when he's <laughs> flipping out about Sam Bankman fraud and all that kind of stuff, they were like. They're like, oh, and then he said this, <laughs> and they're like, he's saying this clown-looking mother, whatever, like costing me <laughs> my money. They think that is like the funniest stuff, man. So it's, uh, yeah, hey, you know, I'm just glad people. Yeah, so you know, if the you know, thing doesn't work out. I've got an audience with <laughs> what 14 year olds. Yeah, 14 year old kids think you're you're a cool dude, yeah, man, man. That's my joint. That's my joint. Who <laughs> is a passionate, passionate guy? Yes. Well, no, but hey, never I, underestimate passion. It well, can and be, I think, it can it can make up for all sorts of negligence and in intelligence and you know drive and motivation <laughs> and all sorts of other things that people tell you you need. All you really need is the passion. You know, here's something though. You're not wrong. I was having a conversation yesterday with somebody and talking about success and how success happen is never overnight. Even overnight success takes so long and it involves a lot of different things. And it's actually it was part of it was the article that you put me onto, Drew, the, the the Sahil Bloom thing about the four types of luck. And one of them is about increasing your luck radius, right? Because it's the idea that by continuing to put yourself in certain positions, you're going to give yourself more opportunities to be lucky, right? And um, you know, and I think when you talk about passion, and I think that also then segues into perseverance, it's like if you're passionate about something, you're going to continue to just keep doing. And as long as you keep doing and the stuff that you're doing, you know, potentially has value or creates opportunity in into itself or it's in a space that's growing, you know, crypto, music, content, whatever you might be doing. I mean, if you love it and you keep at it then eventually you might find yourself stepping into some opportunity and into some success. So it's like, that's an important quality, man. And if you're not passionate about something and you're just going to, you know, then you're also going to deliver different types of effort and types, and that's going to lead to different types of results. So Adam, you were going to say something. Can I, can I just jump in real quick uh, with a Ben Franklin quote about luck? Yes. He said, uh, I'm a strong believer in luck and I find the harder I work, the more I have it. Yeah. A hundred percent. What's what's the what's the reference that you were talking about, JT? Is it a book or something? 
Drop no, it was just a, it was just like an and article. And I'll send you, yeah, I'll send you the link. It's uh, one of these guys that you know posts a lot of this stuff on LinkedIn and Twitter, um, and uh, you know a lot of that kind of like here are some tips for success and stuff like that. And uh, I'll send you the link because this yeah. one was really cool. And uh, you know, and, and Drew had actually circulated to our team as a hey, as we go into twenty twenty three. Here's something to think about, kind of thing, and I and it, and it resonated. In Man, I wasn't even sure if that email went out because nobody responded to it. <laughs> That's because we all were just <laughs> taking the time to absorb it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not only did we like we had we had a workshop about it. You weren't you weren't there. That's all. You know, <laughs> we had a call about it. We talked. There's about a, it. there's a there's a book there's a book that has that kind of stuff in it called Smart Cuts, and the guy talks about like mm. luck and and uh, and he compares it to like uh, surfing. So there's some good stuff in that book too about about. It's not necessarily it looks like luck, but it's not. It's just it's knowing how knowing how to read the waves and being in the water to be able to see the wave coming from a mile yep. away and, and know that it's coming. Yeah. But anyway. And no, no, no. I think book. that's and this kind of goes back to the thing about passion. And if you're passionate about something, then you're gonna hang out. You're gonna be in the ocean. You're gonna be trying to, you know, you're gonna be trying to catch waves. You're you know, it's not gonna feel like work having to be in there and like, you know, in a chore. You just naturally are there because you know, there's something about it that, that draws you to it and and you know, kind of pushes you along. And uh yeah, I mean look, I and I think all this stuff is important. You know, luck is I, I used to say a, a lot where I'm like, man, you know, the thing we'll say is that you know, look how lucky those hardworking, you know, like driven people are, you know, smart, hardworking folks are seem to get really lucky a lot, you know, and it's like, you know, or luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity, you know, and stuff like that. So, which is actually something I made up. So all rights reserved trademark TM wow. So here on Domain Sherpa. But, but um, yeah, so, well, look, I think all good sentiments and especially as we slide into 2023, you know, 2022 is an interesting year, a lot of highs and lows. And, uh, you know, I think we've got some rocky, turbulent times. We, we won't go into so much of expectations. We don't have time for this, but that was on my list. So maybe we'll save that for the next show next week. But, um, you know, it'll be interesting nonetheless. And uh, and the last thing I'll say is, too, is as much as I appreciate the people who tune in, because as I say in every show to the audience, without you, there's no us. But I appreciate all you guys and uh, the time that you all take. And I said this on the Christmas show. Um, you know, you guys give up a lot of your time, your energy, your insight. Um, in some ways, you're giving up competitive like insight that might be better not given out you know but here we are and uh so glad that uh glad that y'all do it hope people appreciate it and definitely appreciate the people who do tune in so with that y'all thank you so much for tuning in here today on domain sherpa for the first episode of 2023 we will continue to do what we do throughout this year and beyond and i uh, hope you guys go along for the ride with us and uh we'll see you next time here on domain sherpa where all roads lead to domains peace Bye, out everybody.